Oh, eight micro zevers on whatever this is. This is soil, I think, on the ground. Think about it, we just seen secret information uh, still left inside there. We've seen propaganda on the walls. I can't read that, but it's old notes. Fifty thousand people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. On April 26, 1986, the most serious accident in the history of the nuclear industry occurred at Unit 4 of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The explosions that erupted from the Chernobyl reactor vessel and the constant fire that continued for 10 days or so resulted in large amounts of radioactive materials being released into the environment. Evacuation of Pripyat took place the day after. On the afternoon of April 27, 1986, the people were allowed to take only necessary items as they were supposed to return in three days. This information was released to avoid panic and to stop people from taking too much luggage with them. Later, the authorities decided to close the city for good. Thousands of people have been affected from radiation exposure, from mutation in children to cancer. As of now, we are able to walk the city of Pripyat safely, but there is still dangerous areas with high levels of radiation. So in Chernobyl and Pripyat, there's checkpoints, and we're not allowed to film them, but I'll show you a glimpse when we get to them. There's Misha, he's gonna get the paperwork signed, and then the cop's gonna come here and ask for my passport. This is all uh, run by the government here, so we can't film. Um, everything in Chernobyl and Pripyat is all run by the government now because of the radiation. It's and everything, so everything's strict here. You need passports to for every checkpoint. Um, yeah, <laughs> this is where it all starts. We're starting here in a village, and we're gonna work our way more into this place we're in right now. Everybody had to exactly leave it. I mean, that they have families, children. Just just imagine that in your head that you're in your house, you're having fun, you're living your daily life, your family, your children, your girlfriend, your you know everything, and you were just forced to just take your special belongings, anything you got, and just leave and never come back because that's exactly what happened. They were given two hours. They were given a radio statement, a big broadcast, that they were given two hours to leave. But they also were told by pre-precautions that they were allowed to come back in three days. But that was just a lie to keep everything safe and calm. Just to, just to get everyone out without riots or pretty much avoid any panic. And that's pretty much the basic history. But as we go along today, we're going to tell you more information about buildings and everything that happened. This is very... I'm trying to make this as informative as I possibly can, especially with... Misha, who's holding my camera as we speak, he's the gangster guy here, he's the coolest guy. Little East travel tour Kiev. They are the first um, people to ever tour Chernobyl. It's the original people to ever take tourists um, to here to explore. If it wasn't for Solo East travel, this video would never happen. They're, they sponsored me to come here to explore this and, and check it out for YouTube. So if, you, so if you like what you see, you like my experience here, any of you around the world, just contact them. The link in the description below. They're gonna, I'll give you every information you can. They're very nice people. They will take you here and explore this whole place and you will be safe. They'll keep you safe. So if anyone around the world who likes this place and wants to come here and likes my experience, check out Solo East Travel and then, yeah, you're here. So let's do this together. So Lisa Village. It was one of the most populated and one of the biggest villages which existed on the territory of the former Chernobyl district. Almost 3,000 people inhabited here. Oh, wow, okay. All these trees, they grew after the Chernobyl accident. They didn't exist here 30 years ago. Also, oh, 30 years ago, these trees yeah, weren't here and... Trees, all these trees, yeah. They were not here. Okay, so now they grew over time after the accident. And so all these people were living here before they were forced to be evacuated as well, right? Yeah, nature just... Takes nature took it over, yeah. yeah. I say that a lot in my videos. Nature takes over. <laughs> so we're going to walk inside one of these buildings. Maybe a few. Look at all the um, old, uh, oh dude, what? Their kid stuffed animals are here still? And their family's boots and everything. Dude, so this we're, so we're in a family's house then, pretty much, ex exactly. Yes. We're in a regular family's house that had kids. And they had, they had to leave everything they, they had behind. Even their clothes are here. Dude, I am freaking out. I am freaking out right now. Some of the old newspapers? Newspaper, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Now our tour guide Misha, he's used to this stuff. You know, he sees yeah, this I every day. This. Yeah, he sees I've all been this doing stuff. This for five years, he, yeah, he's he's a five year veteran here. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. This is the oh I'm assuming yeah, this was their yeah, their wallpaper, wallpaper. The wallpaper of the building. Yeah. 
Oh, their um, what do they call it? their kitchen, yeah, where they cook all their food. Yeah. Man, what really freaks me out is that that stuffed animal we just seen. Yeah, like a market. Here was a market right here. We got three buildings right here. What is this? A farm? It was a barn. It oh. was a garage for a car. It was a barn where people used to keep uh, animals. Oh, so all, all the barn. Yeah, like pigs, yeah, yeah. chickens. Yeah, the, the pigs and chickens were in here? Yeah, were in here. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, the barn, I was right. Yeah. Either left here by those people who were involved during the contamination and cleaning of the area, or it was just left here by... Anyone. Anyone. So, yeah, exactly. Look at this. Ga this is a Chernobyl's gas mask right here. <laughs> Wow. One of thousands. Yeah, one of the thousands of gas masks. Just laying on the floor here. So another another house. It's good though, you get to see like what, what other families have left here. You know what, what other stuff is still belonged here. Lots of pots and pans. Oh yeah. Yeah, their bathroom, all right. Living room. Damn. Yeah. And bedrooms. <gasps> Look at that, their bedroom. Yeah, so, so. All the clothes, some of their clothes are still here too. Yeah. That's what makes me amazed. That's what makes um, Chernobyl... I think besides the history of Chernobyl, it's the stuff that's still left here that makes it more popular as well. Like, impressive. yeah, more impressive is the stuff. When I go to abandoned places, I'm looking for what's left there in documents. Like the history is great, but if I if I see empty rooms and stuff, I'm not gonna spend my time going to the abandoned place unless the history was great. Like when I went to the original where Silent Hill took place in Pennsylvania, it was just a land, but the history was so good, it was so worth it that I went there anyway. I never seen this before everyone. We're seeing sunken ships and because it's all ice, um, they, they look even cooler. It's, I can't really go all the way over there, I can't zoom in, but if you can tell, these boats are just left here and because of the reason why they're here is because they're so contaminated and it costs so much money to clean them up, they just, they just left the boats here in the harbor. Those boats now, the boats uh, were used to take construction material to the nuclear power plant. But you know, after going back and forth, and dealing with contamination so many times that they were they were so contaminated they couldn't pay the money to fix it they just left them here and now they're just sunken ships in the harbor so all the vehicles um, used during that harsh time were sent here it's like a graveyard I mean there's even helicopters here and everything and they're all contaminated so they left them there but now he says where are they now uh, so these graveyards, they don't exist anymore. Authorities made a decision to cut them piece by piece and to bury at special burial grounds, which were created in the wow. from close so, to the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. So, yeah. th so they were buried. So uh, all those were exactly cut, smashed into little pieces and just buried. Yeah, like That's this. a lot. Like this. Oh, exactly like that. Almost like a dumpster, like a graveyard. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the World War II second monument? Yeah. And not only that, but in there is a kindergarten school. We gonna go in? Yeah. Oh, we're gonna go in. Three, and the soil is much more higher. So now we're at, we're getting up 0 0.23, 24. The reader's getting higher. Oh! To the soil, to the soil. To the soil. Oh, shit, man. Oh! Oh, dude, that's bad. That's, that's, that's as big as the, the x-ray. <laughs> that's as big as the, the, the chest x-ray. Damn. It's even going higher, sometimes six now. And it's even beeping. Yeah, it's beeping. <laughs> uh, damn, dude. <laughs>
Dude, I'm mind blown by that. That's crazy. <laughs> it's going off on me. But yo, we're entering the school right now. I can't believe the dolls and stuff, man. Look at this. Oh, steps, yeah. yeah. Can you believe that? The dolls from the children and stuff is right here. Look at all the, the debris from it too, from just naturally decaying. The stuff will fall down from the ceilings. Oh man. This is unbelievable. What do you think that is? It's like medicine, huh? Yeah, it looks like medicine. Yeah. That's somebody brought it here. Yeah, somebody yeah, brought it here. Yeah. Let me show you one here. Oh, that's their, um, that's the information board? What does that say? What's those words say? Which one? Uh, the bolt, the redwoods. That one? Yeah. Uholok? Yep. Means corner. Corner? Yeah, Rodijewski means parents, and Uholok means corner. So, so just, parents corner? Damn, another doll though. Oh man, I never that that is some. I've seen a couple dolls before in some videos, but man, that's more serious dolls. So here with the study room. Do no. F okay. That's insane. Look at all the their their books, man. Yeah. All left here. Hey, it's like a lion, stuffed animal lion. Damn. You can't get any more legit than this. <laughs> what is this? Children were taught to read. Oh, children were taught to read? Yeah, starting from oh, okay. words, after that sentences, and passages. Passages. And they even got music notes. Yeah, music notes. Alright, look at this. Now, I think this is the coolest room, man. I'm not even going to lie to you. This. This is, dude, so they lived here, the kindergarten, or this is like nap time. Uh, yeah, this is just a nap time room. They this would just nap in here. here. The daycare, kin yeah. oh, kindergarten daycare. Parents used to bring their children to the daycare building while they were working. Yep. The rest is staying here. With oh, okay. Teachers, they were sleeping yep. at the daytime, and in the evening, after their parents were done with their work, they used to come here and pick them up. So they'd pick them up, oh, okay, yes. Yeah, it's de definitely just a daycare. Yeah, this is a daycare building. Yeah, or daycare, kindergarten. kindergarten. Yeah, both, both. Both, yeah. Damn. <laughs> Look at the freaking pillow sheets and beds. There's a doll on that one. So, yeah, with a burnt face. Yeah, his face is pretty burnt. Or the girl's face is pretty burnt. Man. I've been inside a lot of abandoned buildings, but I love how these look. Oh wow, look at these bedrooms, yeah. It's not a double. Oh man. Well, more um, looks like medicines and stuff. Oh dude, what? We got, they're old pills. Actual medicine, no, their pills are here. Maybe these are iodine pills. Is it iodine pills? Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Could say on there, I don't know. I can't read that. Oh, it's written in uh, Latin. Land, yeah, we don't know. But yeah, it could be iodine pills. I don't see why not. So right here we're in the heart of the whole accident. That's nuclear reactor four, and that's exactly what blew. That made everyone in this whole entire city had to evacuate and made all the damages happen because of that right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to it after. I'll show you one trick. So usually when we hold the bike because we're like this. Yep. When we are old. Sarcophagus, the radiance are going up. 3.5, yeah? Yeah. The average radiation on the ground here. But 3.6, but when we put this Geiger counter, Geiger detector, behind this monument or behind this rock, the ratings are going down. Oh yeah, it is, it's going because down. this thick rock, this thick monument, it blocks the rays, gamma rays, that are getting out from that destroyed reactor number four. That is hidden behind that so, ev so even right now, that reactor is still leaking it out right now. Yeah, just those gamma rays. They're yeah, the gamma. They're powerful. Yeah, they pass. They're rays. The 
two or three uh, mm, meters thick wall. Yeah. And they are just coming out passing through us right now as right we speak. Now. Yeah, as we speak. <laughs> As we stand here. You hear that? Right now we are getting hit with radiation, but it's such a low dose. Yeah. But it's coming out of there right now, hitting us. And this and this can even prove to you right here that it is coming out. But it's see how low oh see how low it drops when you put it behind the wall? Yeah. And, and look at this. It's gonna go back up. Just try to finally stop this from leaking out, the nuclear reactor. By building this dome. We're gonna call it a dome. And it's actually somewhat on wheels on the bottom, and they're gonna push it with remote control cranes and everything and they're going to slide it right into that reactor and then it's going to be completely aired shut and shielded and no more will ever be spitting out so pretty much this meter that you see now it's not going to rise up when we put it over here anymore this is going to be finally finished and put over that reactor at the end of 2017 yeah the end of November the end of November and it talks it costed 28 countries two billion dollars to make this but we have to make this because we all live in this world and we have to think of a plan to stop natural disasters and man-made disasters so that's what they did all right look at this it's pre priet this is the sign the welcoming sign not only that but even has the date when this town was built so that's cr that's really great to see i'm right in front of this place too but over here look the radioactive uh, sign you uh, no one's got selfies of this not even me. This is the only selfie I took since I had my GoPro. But I think it's a good sign. You already know we passed the pre pre welcome signs. Yeah. So you already know where we're going now. We're approaching, right now we're approaching the last checkpoint. Which is perfectly fine. It's understandable because we're about to be into the city right now. So, you're saying that this amusement park was built just to distract people from not looking at the reactor yeah. that was burning. Yeah. That could be it because it wasn't like it was like heavily built. There was no walls. And, you know, it wasn't a, a, a great amusement park. It was just stuff just thrown here. Yeah. It was built so quick just to distract people from the reactor. And then the next day, everybody left. So people only got to ride these rides for one day. The ghost town of Pri Priet right here, huh? Yeah. Straight up ghost town. Look at this. The main Another radioactive um, sign. sign, yeah. So this is it. We're in the mainland, the, the, the heart of the town, main street. We're passing by like hundreds of apartments just coming to this area right now. But I'm going to try to give you guys uh, an out, out, um, a little description of where we are right now. So right there was the administration building, the hotel. Culture, culture Arch, Center. oh, Culture Center, Restaurant. restaurants, supermarkets, supermarkets, and two 16-story buildings. Two buildings. But look at this, the Soviet Union symbol. If I zoom up ahead, you can see it right on the building, and that that is so cool to see. Yeah, I can so tell that this was a supermarket as well. With all those signs. Yep, I can so picture the supermarket yeah. here. Let's Sausage, meat, beer. Oh, the about that. Yeah, a lot of stuff just dropped down and left. Yeah. Okay, there's their freezers and their old mini sharpening carts. Jeez. Got some little chairs. So here's the culture building now. Yeah. Wrecked. It's definitely wrecked. There's not even um, stairs anymore. <laughs> each town, each city in the Soviet Union had the cultural center. It was the place where all cultural and sports events took place, uh, including election campaign and all this stuff like that. Yeah. So here on the ground floor, there was a the huge theater hall. On the second floor, there was dance floor. Dumb floor? Dance floor. Dance floor. Oh yeah, I seen that in the in that video we watched. <laughs> yeah, on the third floor there was a library. And on the other side there was a lecture hall, huge gymnasium. On the ground floor there was a swimming pool, gymnastics. Uh oh. Man, you all are watching this are gonna see a lot of before and after pictures. That's for sure. 
Damn, look at the art. Some of the art's still here. Yep. Oh my, and the marble floors? Very expensive city then. Yeah. Well, and supply of food products of everything was perfect this time. Because per the town was really, really rich because of and due to the Chernobyl nuclear power yeah. station. Salaries here usually were two or three times higher than the than, average. Than average. Yeah, in the So we had a so pretty much there was a lot of high class people living here as well yeah. in this city. So this was like the dream city back in the day and look what happened. Wow, it's it's crazy how my camera is making it look much lighter than what it really is. Look at this. Oh yeah. See I can't even see that with my own eyes. It's really, really cool, yeah. Yeah, so right here, um, what, what, what Miss said was the theater. Yeah. So Dude, what is that? Is that posters over there? Yeah. They're the portraits. Oh, portraits. Yeah, portraits of one of the community party leaders. But look at the, what I really like is that ceiling. Yeah. That ceiling's insane. Look at it, it's just still there too. Not, no damage at all to the ceiling. And I wonder... This happens to be their dance floor and if you watch the video in the first episode you would see that you would the, the children were dancing they were dancing right here correct yeah dancing just right here look how it is now I'm so glad we have before and afters to show you what it used to look like and look at I me mean, we get to see how abandoned the town is in front of us as well this was all glass windows and here they are smash on the floor some of them. They had an upstairs. Wow. Look at their, their dance floor. This Look is, at that. This is one of the main reasons why a little building started to collapse. This because it trees were... nature reclaimed the area. Takes back everything. Yeah, nature does take yes. back everything. And, and trees are growing in the rooms, <laughs> in the premises, on the roofs, and they just destroy the concrete. You're right. I mean, they're just growing out of the, the freaking ballet building dance floor. I'm going through that. Oh, oh my God, dude, the Ferris wheel. <laughs> we we have a glimpse of the Ferris wheel. But oh man, I'm so um surprised about the gymnasium, right? I, hey, I like how the colors are still here, though. It's <laughs> like the, the colors of the wood didn't fade away. Hey, and the rope that you climb, everybody climbs. Dude, we are walking in. Dude, all the, this thing, you know, what I, you know what really blows my mind, though? I mean, we're here now, and this is how it looks. But before, I mean, there was people all over playing. You know, they're having fun, yeah. doing their volleyball. work, history. Yep, volleyball, soccer, everything you can think of. They're, they're doing it here, and now we're walking, and it's completely gone. Just memories now and forgotten. Right there it says strong, brave, and skillful. These are some of the regular gymnastics rooms here. There's about, how many rooms do you think there are? I think there are about five. Five of these rooms? Yeah. And here's just one of them. What is this thing? The punching bag or? Yeah. Yeah. It's small one. Dude, I don't think that's small at all. It's a huge swimming pool. I don't know. Another one? So he says there's another pool that's bigger than this one. I'm like, damn, this is big. God. This is actually the boxing ring. I never seen an abandoned boxing ring before, but I like look at the building though. Like I get, like I said, that your your stone buildings are way cooler than in America and how the architecture is here. So this is the remains of it. That's cool though. Man, they had everything in this in this thing. Pool, ballet for dancing, gymnasium. I don't know. It, it just keeps going. A gym, a boxing ring. That makes it way cooler.
about the amusement park. According to our official data, it's supposed to be opened only on the 1st of May, 1986. Yeah. But it was opened. Oh, it did? Only for one day. One day? That's what I was told. And I heard that too, before yeah, coming here. It was here. opened only for one day. So when the accident happened, a lot of people uh, found out about the fire at the Chernobyl nuclear power station. And a lot of them started to go to the bridge, which we passed on our way to the town. Okay. There was a great spot for looking at that destroyed reactor number four. Uh. So a lot of people started to go there. So and authorities, when they realized that, they decided to distract people and they made a decision to open an amusement park. As a result, all people started to come here instead of going to that bridge because the only thing which they could uh, could see there it was only uh, small smoke coming up from that destroyed deck number four that's it so as a result people started to come here and ride the ferris wheel and ride the ferris wheel to ride the bumper cars ride swinger or ride the carousel all the things which were built for them and next day they were just evacuated just evacuated yeah wow that's so what, that's what i was told Hey, you will we'll never know. Yeah. So, you're saying that this amusement park was built just to distract people from not looking at the reactor yeah. that was burning. Yeah. That could be it because it wasn't like it was like heavily built. There was no walls, and you know, it wasn't a, a, a great amusement park. It was just stuff just thrown here. Yeah. It was built so quick just to distract people from the reactor, and then the next day everybody left. So people only got to ride these rides for one day. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> So this ride, it was like little swings. It's pretty much just a swing set. But if you look at it, it was like a boat style. So a couple people would swing on those swing sets. Just like at the abandoned Six Flags in New Orleans that I went to, uh, abandoned bumper cars are here. <laughs> we decided to walk inside the bumper cars. Here's um, where the instructor would be to stop and turn the ride on. But... Look at it. Yep. Now look how old these bumper cars are. Um, there's like dirt. It's like the paint color is just dirt. That's what it is. The steering wheel's right there. It's not even attached to it anymore. None of these are working. But they're all here. <laughs> Um, but over here is, you know, another instructor booth, you know, they're in there turning on this famous Ferris wheel. I mean, obviously, you, there's no stairs now. You can't do anything. But there you go. You can sit right in those benches. Look like they're like school chairs. <laughs> like for elementary school and stuff. Did you find a way to turn the ride on? <laughs> oh man. So once the families and everyone knew that they couldn't come back to the city, you know how all their belongings and everything was left here? Um, they just they took the whole place, circled it around with barbed wire. They covered the whole place with barbed wire, like a gate, a big wall around the town so nobody can come here, just to prevent looters. But obviously looters still came in and they took stuff, but they were also getting affected by the radiation. We're approaching the soccer stadium. Soccer's very big in Europe. Oh man. Dude, I have no words could explain how excited I am to be here right now. Like, honestly. And I'm not just, uh, but one thing I do want to say is the history here is very sad. So, I mean, with all due respect, I'm excited to be here because of how this is and I love abandoned stuff, but if you really think about the history, it's sad because that could happen and if that were you, you know, it'd be really upsetting. The soccer stadium bleachers, you know, we're all sitting watching the spectator seats. And that's it. That's the soccer stadium. Look, how, look at the trees. They, they took over it. And where he's standing, those are the running tracks. Right here where he's standing. Look at that, so we're, we're walking the streets and I'm like, hey, what's that? I think there's a school here. Sure enough, and it's, fast, yeah. it's right there. <laughs> Fifteen kindergartens were in the city yeah. and five middle schools. 
So each family had an average of two to three kids yeah. in the Soviet Union. Yeah. And here we go, we're about to walk in here. I don't know what to expect. <laughs> so we're gonna go in together. We haven't even got in yet and there's already a dead baby. <laughs> Oh. Nothing but the sound of water drops. Ooh. Loving the hallways with the paint chips. My... Oh, this cold? Oh, another gymnasium like the last one. Look at this one though. This is. I like this one better. I think because it's more older. I'm not sure. I definitely think this one's cooler looking. Hey, you hear my echo too. Yeah. Yeah, 0 0.12 now. We're gonna enter the courtyard. Check out the radiation levels here. Uh, we got 2.5. Got All right. We got, we got, we're getting some 3.0s over here. 3.5, it's beeping. Oh, I'm at 6.2 now. So all, the whole entire city, the soil, the ground, 10 or 15 well, centimeters of the whole entire um, ground was removed to, to, you know, to get the radiation out. But this exact courtyard, that's true soil from the old days, never removed, never touched. That soil right in there. So it contains a high level of radiation. Look at the eyeballs of that doll, though. That's that's messed up. And they're trying to put the doll with the gas mask. Down. We're looking for the a pretty tall building so we can climb to the top and get the sunset. We'll find one. There is so many gas masks. It's not even funny. And these are all. The, this was part of the schools, right? Because every school had gas so masks. It was a part of the educational system those days. So everyone. Every single student of the school is supposed to have a gas mask in case of natural calamities, in case of war. Uh, yeah, exactly. Is. Yeah, I think even the United and States as well, in the or before. Union, even these days in Ukraine, we have a subject which is called civil defense. Civil defense, you're civil okay. Civil defense. Yeah, we are taught to put on these gas masks as quick as possible. We are uh, also uh, taught to assemble and dismantle. Oh, how to K make them? Wait, you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and at the end of the year, usually senior year students, so they do that. Dude, at we do not do that the, in America. At the end of the year. At the end of the year, you all learn how to assemble gas masks and guns. Yeah. And at the end of the year, usually it's uh, in May or in June, boys are taken to shooting grounds and they shoot from those AK-47 guns. What? Yeah. So there's other stuff here on the tables as well. Um, you know, we got books. Dude, look at that, the old Soviet Union um, flag. That's crazy. Is that the old milk bottles? Yeah. <laughs> I see them in movies. Dude, look at the eyeballs of that doll, though. That's, yeah, yeah. that's messed up. And they're trying to put the doll with the gas mask? Okay. Some freaky stuff we got going on here. Uh, cash register. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't beat this one. The one that's hung up. Mm -hmm. A very important room. I mean, that's, that's, that's wild, all those gas masks. Looks like a, uh, another information board was right there. Damn, look. So are the classrooms? Desks. Books. Oh, wow, yeah. Tons and tons of books. Man, people took all their desks and chairs and just threw them up against the walls. And people really like putting TVs over here. Damn, there was, that's where the... Um, their chalkboard was. Tons of books just left here too. What's the book say? Trip to the future. Trip to the future? <laughs> oh man. Talk about the future. Seriously, look at this. Now this is oh man. The alphabet? Yeah. The alphabet's right there. Again, the chalkboard was right there. This guy looks spooky. That's cool. I wonder if that's a kid that went here.
There's another one there too, look at it. Look at that. Some stuff's in the back, what's behind there? Old plants? I'm just sitting in the back of here, it's dead quiet. I'm just picturing the kids, you know, walking up to the teacher's desk and coming back down, getting their homework done and doing their tests and everything's just forgotten here. So we're walking to the swimming pool, and this was the sign that said swimming pool, but that's gone. <laughs> well, we're still coming in hard. Sun's starting to get a little bit low, but we're still going. We've been we've been filming for like a good six hours, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah maybe, maybe about six hours we've been filming for. Here we go. Damn. The huge swimming pool. This one is big. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I don't think I've ever seen a swimming pool this big. But I don't really swim that much. But this is huge. Look at that. You know what's even awesome? The background. You see all these abandoned houses in the background. Huge ones, too. Yeah, all the, and all those windows, they were glassed. They were all glass at one point? Yeah. Damn, windows were all glassed. We're seeing abandoned. Are you, are you can see more now. It looks, like it's, it looks like it's still active in the back, but it's not. It's all abandoned. This is a straight up ghost town. a very big clock for a very big pool buildings after the accident in this town they were used for different purposes there were um, you know laboratories uh, there were complexes for metal desactivation there were experimental greenhouses uh, yep. for uh, you know um, uh, scientific researchers to uh, see the effects uh, of radiation on plants on vegetables, on other things. That's actually interesting. Yeah, it's it's it so is so they kept so pretty much um, special people were still allowed here after yeah, the of accident. Course. So scientists, scientists, and experts, they were always allowed into the exclusion zone. Even when the radiation was going off, ten years after everything was still yeah, going on. A lot of international scientists came all across here to came study radiation. And they still come to the Chernobyl exclusion zone to study to the radiation, study the radiation effects on plants on. Uh, flora on sauna on animals population so the sun's about to come down we're looking for the a pretty tall building so we can climb to the top and get the sunset we'll find one so we found one after walking a while we're gonna try to climb this one it's pretty tall hopefully we can still get the sunlight and post office building yeah oh the school yeah that's the post office building and oh wow look at that that's how it used to look. Yeah. And now look at it. Completely different. What? 
Oh, you know, just climbing a 16-story building to the top and and prep yet. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Whoa, all the all the citizens' mailboxes. Yeah. Oh, every floor has their own set of mailboxes. Okay, I get it. Oh, it goes down. Damn, what floor are we on? Three? <laughs> There's the elevators. I wish we could take them. Elevators aren't working no more. We made it. Oh, we made it. That was harder than I thought. Okay. Oh yeah, right there. You do. Yup, there's the oh. nuclear reactor, the power station. But look at this. This is the whole entire Parpiat city. And you can look over here. There's the Ferris wheel. Can you believe that? This whole thing is abandoned. Let's check out the other sides. No one lives in any of them. Maybe I'm just still trying to take all this in right now to accept the fact that I'm over here. But it is crazy. Let's check the other side now. I mean, what's very, like what we were talking about before, so many trees have just grown. Some trees are as high as the buildings itself. Right now we're gonna check for radiation because we were inside the radiation zone. So we're gonna get, make sure we're okay when we get decontaminated or anything like that. <laughs> Hopefully we're, we're safe. Let's do it. You first? All right, thank you. So. Okay, you see this radiation scanning here. Yep. This is the equipment which is used to do radiation scanning. What do we need to do here? We just need to step in to see all these things. They are radiation detectors. If oh, you have yeah. something on your clothes, so they will detect it. As well as on the shoes. Ah, oh, yes, the yeah. shoes. So we just step in, press our hands here, we wait. And another one? Do it again. I don't know what's going on. Um, maybe I'm contaminated. No, no, no. It doesn't show anything. And use this one. I use this one. Oh. So this machine just detects if you have any radiation on it. Yeah. Alright. That's what it is, yeah. Oh, maybe I'm hit. No. I don't think so at all. Maybe they just broke down. Alright, we can try can another be... one. And use this one. Alright, we'll try this one. Oh, dude, when I did it though, that light went on. Yeah, but I, but it's supposed to show another line. Clean or dirt. Oh, okay. Clean or dirty. It's really old though. What's going on here? Kept this whole thing hidden, even on the map. They said this was a student college and stuff. Soviet Union, man. The, the Russians are crazy. A tree just fell and blocked us. We're trying to leave the military base and they're trying to keep us here, I guess. So we gotta go ahead and move it. What's going on here? 
Dude, maybe I have Press some. your hands. I'm doing it, no? Oh, oh green. Yeah, so I'm safe. Yeah, yes. means that you're safe. Yeah, yes. that you are not contaminated. Dude, I thought I had radiation. <laughs> <laughs> And you got scared? Uh, no, no, not really. I, I thought maybe the boots, you know? <laughs> Alright, so I'm safe. Yes, yes, you are good. No, no radiation. No. Alright, thanks. That's funny. <laughs> right now we're driving to a missile base. And this forest was, like, was literally planted here on purpose. Just so they could hide the base even more. And the antennas. This place is abandoned. There's still a checkpoint you have to go through. In the middle of the woods too, there's a guy here. I saw the security's great here. They even got attack dogs, everyone. They're talking in Ukrainian right now, I don't know what they're saying. They moved their attack dogs out for us. Now I'm gonna get my flashlight. Station was operational, here was the main checkpoint. Here was the main checkpoint, to the left. There were military barracks. Military where barracks? Soldiers and officers who were on duty at this uh, station used to stay. Nice. They used to stay in those military barracks. There was a marching square over there. So that's where they were located. Oh, I see. So they all slept in there. Yeah. All right, nice. All right, so what I found out now is that be the, um, behind here is a village. It's a whole city, pretty much. A fire station. Everything you needed to live is behind there. And that's where all the families of the military people lived. Their barracks are right here. We're trying to go inside um, their radar station. Right there, some propaganda on the walls. Not official, it was the radar which is supposed to detect nuclear missiles. Oh, exactly, missiles. so we don't actually technically know yeah, what this and is. Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of soldiers who weren't you to hear, they had no idea about the real purpose of this antennas. Even the soldiers the, here? Even soldiers here. Damn! Yeah, only those people who used to work with the control room, they knew about the real purpose of it. Almost but like an air... They had no idea. Almost like an Area 51, dude. Yeah. So only people who worked here knew exactly what was going on here. Even the people who were guarding out the side had no idea what was actually going on right in here. Yeah, and on the map of the Soviet Union, this place was marked at the place, all these areas was marked at the place of the student summer camp. So students supposed to come here during summer holidays. What? So, yeah. What the hell? Dude, that's insane. So they kept this whole thing hidden, even on the map, they said this was a student college and stuff. Soviet Union, man, the, the Russians are crazy. <laughs> So being up close and personal, it's way bigger than I thought. If I had more time, I would be the cool guy and climb it. But we don't have all day here. We're walking on all sand over here too. So this is as close as we can get. Well, this is the best view we can get to be up close to show everything in the camera. And like I said, we don't know exactly what these radars were used for. I mean, um, antennas were, yeah, we don't know what these antennas were actually used for. But mostly for detecting what they say, missiles being launched around the world, but it could be used for anything. We'll never exactly know. Thank God I brought this amazing flashlight with me for today. It's very bright, so don't look at it. It'll, it'll blind you, man. <laughs> Dude, so... Yeah, this is, a, this is just a long, long corridor. Long it's corridors. Long it's almost one kilometer long. Oh, man. Yeah. This is all for the Soviet Union, yeah, dude. <laughs> there were a lot of cables. Cables underground? Yeah. You all have to picture what I'm doing right now. Like, just think about it. We are inside a Russian military base right now. That's something I could put on my resume, dude. My resume, man? Yeah. Here's a lot more of their equipment. Look at all this. Oh, maybe I could make out, I don't know. A lot of transistors and batteries and caps and all military Soviet Union Russian equipment is right here in front of us. You know, they destroyed their own equipment to hide intel. Look at this, so much. No one would ever be able to come here if this was still running, except the people here. Like, not even us. Not, never ever would be able to set foot here. Because if they were sitting here looking in front of their screens, there's got to be something big that was on this wall. Maybe a projector or something, no? Dude, wow. Man, so you know, they must have the keyboard right there, maybe, and 
tons of stuff. Yeah, I don't even know what could have been here. We don't have, we'll never find before and after pictures of this place because it was such a secret anyway. Down there is some stuff. Dude, I wish it was hard drive still here. What does that say on it? I don't even know. Nation and Army are united. Wow. I mean, yeah. we're, so much times have changed. The Soviet Union don't exist anymore. And yeah. I mean, we're sitting here. Look, look at this. Look at this. All, what is this? All propaganda too? or? Yeah, high military preparedness is the law of uh, uh, military anti-aircraft life. Damn. Oh my God. This is cool stuff right here. Yeah. Misha found something. Armed forces of the United States is the weapon of aggression and threat to the world. What? How do you like this? Wait. It was a Cold War period. It was a Cold War time. This was a Cold War so time. The Soviet Union and the United States, they were enemies. They were yeah. not friends. You're so right though. Wait, it. so yeah. say, say what this says again? So armed forces of the United States is a weapon of aggression and threat to the world. Dude, they're talking junk about America right here. Yeah. This is Soviet Union times, like you said, this is way back. Dude, I'm... Uh, Wyoming State, Arizona State, Montana State, North Dakota State. Dude, so the Soviet Union State, had a lot of... Um... Arkansas, Missouri, Kansas, Damn. Wyoming. So the, so the Soviet Union had our um, states on this board. Yeah. So they had, they had plans for us now. They didn't like us. So this, we're seeing some, some old plans right here. <laughs> so, wait, so what does this say again? The Organizational top? structure of aircraft systems of uh, um, United no. States. So they knew these are pretty much where bases were maybe in America that they knew about. And so they jotted it down on this board. And you know, everyone was inside here. Who knows what they were doing in here, but all the propaganda is still up on their wall. So they're really, you know, trying to make their, Soviet Union army go against us and stuff. You know, there's all these boards. They're really like mind controlling them as well. <laughs> Found another room, and what we uh, may understand is that this was a training room for the workers. Maybe like a practice room. Look at all these boards. And, uh, like it looks like almost like circuit motherboards in a way. Bunch of oh my god, yes, look. Like little switches and stuff. With buttons would be there. This must have been a serious one. This one still has um some of the things on it. See, I can't read what they say. Up there too. Maybe someone in the viewers might know what that means. Dude, is this the holy? F this is the world, man. Yeah, this is the world. I w and I guess this is the North America. Dude, look at look at they, they drew some kind of line on the like a border. So they had the whole thing planned, and this is way back in the day. So they had like a little, someone made a a world model here. For what reason we don't know. I mean, the, oh man, the Soviet Union had had everything planned out. Well, at least they they thought they did. Look at that. I don't know if they're berries or something, but they're definitely uh, radioactive, contaminated. You can't even touch them or eat them. But we're out. I don't know what to say. That was, I think, my favorite part so far in um, this whole entire video series of Chernobyl. I mean, think about it, we just seen secret information uh, still left inside there. We've seen propaganda on the walls, talking crap about America. There's secret, uh, talking about our American bases and... Man, that was, that was, that's up there. Um, hey, look at this. Bob wire all surrounding the bottom and a little lookout tower up there. So as we're driving to the road, um, a tree, a tree just fell and blocked us. We're trying to leave the military base and they're trying to keep us here, I guess. So we gotta go ahead and move it. Uh. Is it heavy, you think? Oh, no. oh, we could break it. That's how old it is. Yeah. Nice. yeah so right there is like their monument of like peace and friendship in a way, you yeah. could say? Yeah. And um, pretty much, it's pretty much just representing the 13 Soviet Union states all together joined.
the hospital right now. I'm great at exploring hospitals, you guys already know. And the top of the roof it says the health of the nation is the wealth of the country. Uh, obviously, it's in Ukrainian, but I'm starting to know the Ukrainian, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, he told me. <laughs> Think about it, I explored so many asylums and hospitals, and now we're in Chernobyl, I mean Pri Priet City, and I'm going inside a hospital here. Guess they were trying to grow plants by the windows here. Here's their water treatment room. Let me try to focus. And, you know, obviously it's, you know, um, try to help patients move their muscles again and, you know, all that good stuff. Nothing left, though. It's like water therapy and stuff. I mean, there's a lot, a lot of rooms here, but... I don't know what that is either. Well, some more medicine bottles up there. I love when I see medicine bottles or anything like that inside rooms. Um, look at this. I can't read that, but it's all notes and... Wow, here we go. Look at that, it's still in its bottle. Nineteen eighty-five. Down here, it looks like um, it says their address on it. Show some. I don't know. It looks like to be a, your review of what's wrong with you or something. They go over your body and stuff. They check you out. Huh. There's so many. <laughs> There's tons and tons of rooms, so I'm just gonna go through them. Looks like yeah, this is, curtains are right there. Beds are right here as well. Oh, the plant's still there. It's a good sign. Ooh. Holy shit, dude. That's the highest we've seen so far. 12.45. 15. Point, that's higher than 20. We're at, dude, 19. 20.4. Get this. That's a third. Oh, what? We just hit 59. That's really high. 59 is the highest I've ever seen. That's Now that's considered dangerous, I think. We're not going to go near there. That piece of cloth right there is actually from the firefighters that put out the fire that tried to stop the nuclear reactor uh, from fall, uh, number four from exploding. Pretty much when, when, it, when the nuclear uh, reactor four exploded, the firefighters, the one of them was wearing that cloth right there, went inside to try to put out the fire and pretty much most of them, if not all of them, died or got sick from it. And you can tell it's still radioactive now. Just here in the harbor. Look at this. We're, we're, we are in here right now. So I'm on a boat right now. I don't know if you can hear me from my voice. Still looking nice. That stuff. All right, yo, they, they, they dip the, the needle inside there and, and suck it up. People's um gloves and has uh, hazard suits, it looks like. Right there still on the floor here in this hospital. So right here is the maternity department. That's where women gave birth. Right here. It, the thing is, look, look how it's set up. It's still exactly, you know, where they would be given birth. <laughs> There's the light, huge lights beaming down on them. Um, wow, that's, that's very interesting. It's crazy how their beds are just in the hallway right now. Oh, man. That is the, dude, this is definitely the freakiest thing I've seen, I think, exploring so far. <laughs> this beats everything. So after they gave birth, you know, they're putting the babies in these things. <laughs> Man. This calls, dude, I don't even know what to say. Whew. There's a bunch of stuff in here. 
on the floors too. Yeah, hey, a lot of, look at that, there's even a key right there. Oh, what? Ah, oh, look at that. Those. Operated inside this room, right? For the patients? Ooh. Those are the lights. Damn. Oh yeah, dude. Definitely. They did some crazy operations in here, huh? All their equipment's just thrown on the floors now. So we're getting right into the resuscitation room. And this is where like you could be saved. Like if you're dying and you're you're about to die, they can save you, you know, really put you back to life. But this one makes me really curious. All these medicines. And a whole bunch. It gets way better in here though. You know, this is their, look at their, their medicine cabinet and it's just still looking nice. That stuff. I remember you know, they, they dip the, the needle inside there and, and suck it up. Damn. Hey, they say, hey, they say English. It says uh, vitamins. It says vitamins on it. So it could have been vitamin A, B, C, D. Uh, you know, who knows what vitamin it was. But it does say vitamin. Um, one of them says B on it. Hey, we have the jackpot with the, with the bottle of medicines. Look at all them bad boys. They're even inside the shelf still, stacked. What? Look at this. Must be, maybe it was a patient that worked here or someone's diary. Looks like we're at another main uh, little lobby here in the middle. We've got the information boards. The wind's quite breezy right now. This was their old fish tank. I think it was. <coughs> oh wow. Look at their beds. Still the mattresses are on them and everything. This room has tons of books and stuff in it. Look at the posters hanging on the walls. Oh yeah. Lots of books though. They're, they're not even, they're, it almost looks like they're in order still. So three years ago, this middle school collapsed. There's five middle schools in here, so uh, only one of them is gone right now at this time. If you look up, you can even see some of their desks on the top floor. I'm gonna go look through the window. Look at it. Just to give you all an idea of this middle school. This is just me looking through the window. Look how the desks are still here. Look at that though. Their books and everything is still on the back shelves. In probably the next 10 or 15 years, most of these buildings are, are not even gonna be even decently safe to walk in. This is the hospital. If you look, you've seen the hospital, it's falling apart, the water damage is everywhere. Just because of old age and natural causes and everything, the way of life, it's gonna, all, all these are gonna become unsafe soon and eventually, but we're looking at the next 10 to 15 years. We're approaching one of their cafes and behind here is their harbor. Gotta go check this bad boy out. Got some vending machines outside the calf. Wow. Cold spray. Look at the windows. Has a nice circular design on the outside of it. Assuming we're, in, we're coming in from the back way, so. Damn. Y'all are getting lucky that you're getting the grand tour. Look at those buildings. Is that stained glass? Yeah. Nice. 
They did a good job on the stained glass. Yeah. I see one of those on the floor. Small pieces of glass were put together. Yeah, stained glass is worth a lot of money. Man. See, you can clearly see another sunken ship right over there. We're like ice skating over here. So much ice everywhere. There's not much times you can say that you can see an abandoned ship just here in the harbor. And look at this. We're, we're, we are in here right now. <laughs> On the boat. This is... This is awesome, man. We are walking in the boat. Some kind of control panel. I'm still, I feel like I'm, we're the captain of the ship now. We have no men on board, but it's just us, but we can still get the ship to go. It's a little damaged. Try to get it going again. <laughs> Damn. I still can't believe this. Look at that, so it, like, it like wants to tip over. It's gotta be big. If you look over here, you can see the basement's flooded with water. Right over here. See that? Can't. I don't know if you can see it on my camera, but it's all flooded with water, so no one's going down there anytime soon. Unless you're a scuba diver. Most most of this is probably literally going to collapse soon anyway. Everything's all destroyed. I never got to say I walked a abandoned ship though, ever. That's off my list. Here's the back of the boat. So I'm on a boat right now. I don't know if you can hear me, but my boy Fish is filming me right now. But I'm chilling on a boat. An abandoned boat. So glad I went on that boat. But I won't forget that. Now we're going to a music school and a cinema. They had everything here. Oh, wow, look how much, oh, look at the art they did, huh? Really good music school. What? Yeah. Unsafe. Don't do this at home, boys and girls. Wow. I can't believe this. Man, so we had everyone playing their music here. Everyone's watching you over there. That's, that's something. Some of the keys still work on this piano. Pretty much as you leave the music room and you just it's still connected to the same building. You leave it and you just walk down more. You end up in the movie cinema. I brought my flashlight and I'm so happy that I did. Well look at that. Yeah 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 the projector screen and everything. Wow. And there were seats. The the last three seats, man. The last seven. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I didn't there, see the ones back there. Right here. The last seats there. Oh, there are some more. Oh, you're right, alright. So we have, you know, <laughs> we have a couple of seats left. See that being the ticket box for the cinema? Right there. And the entrance to get into the cinema was right here. And for us, we just walk out the window. Like that. Oh, this is all the parking lot, yeah? Very big. Uh, the top of the building, you can see the name of the cinema. So what's the cinema called? Promete. Promete? Promete. Promete. Ah, I got it. <laughs> mutation, did mutation happen here? Like, is that real? And it's, it's really true. There was two-headed animals. There was 
babies with maybe two heads or two arms or you know um you know stuff like that it actually happened here over the the first six years and even longer um it was all true uh, the mutations happen pretty much with a high dose of radiation it changes your dna structure and anything could happen to you right now we're entering their post office find some old people's mails here hopefully Wow. Good to see that's still here, huh? Yeah. Soviet Union Post. Soviet Union Post. Oh, wow. Look at that. The city's envelopes and people's names and letters and... So much stuff. In the Soviet Union, these are phone boxes. Uh, pretty much you would sit inside, talk to whoever you got to talk to, because they didn't have much. They had no internet. They didn't have much back then. Operators in the back, there was a guy here. You know, you just paid to talk, and you would just, you would get um, des uh, designated into one of these. Now approaching their police station. Look at, they still have their antenna on the roof. Don't touch those berries. <laughs> okay. Those hammers. I'm assuming that this was the map and what the police saw uh, run off of. Uh, look at that. They had a little decent model of the building. I was thinking, where is there a holding cell? This has to be one here. And as you're on the phone, and I was like, oh wait, there it is. Look at this. The holding cell. I've never been to an abandoned jail yet, but I'm working on it. I am going to go to one when I get back to the States. Dude. That is so sick. Dude, think about it, everyone. I am now inside the holding cell of um, Propriet. I'm going to jail. He's going to lock me in here. Dude, if you really lock me in here, I'm stuck. And yeah. don't have a key. He doesn't have a key. No. See, you can't, you can't trust your, um, your people nowadays. They're always going to backstab you, you know? <laughs> oh, more lockups? Oh, man. I like lockups. Interrogation room. Let me see the interrogation room. I never interrogation room is right here. Oh, man. Dude, so if you did something bad, and th th you get yeah, sentenced yeah. up in there? You do something. Dude, that's that's no joke. Maybe KGB used these rooms as well those days. Damn. And here are real lockups. The real jails. Real jails. Real jail cells, everybody. Ch uh, tell everyone. Tell everyone you know, explain with Josh. Rules in this, in the zone. <laughs> yeah. Here. Yeah, dude. If if you mess up and you, you're on, t you're you know you're hanging out, you're on tour, and you you mess up, you're gonna be sent in one of these jail cells. But just think about it. We're in Prepriat's Prepriat's um, jail cell right now. We are exploring it. I think that's interesting to me. Going down the hallways where all the bad people were. Right here is like their um their playground when you're your jail cell playground. Everybody gets to go outside sometimes when you're in jail. They have a sucky one. Look, they can't break out of those. If they wanted to. They ain't breaking out of nothing. That's funny. You see that right there? That crane. That's the same crane that was used to take out anything and like any kind of debris, anything you would see inside of the reactor four from the explosion. That's the crane they use to pick up anything out of there, which means it's highly contaminated. And behind that, part of the, you know how we talked about there was a remote control car that was used to take the debris and push it down into the reactor four to stop any radioactive from spilling? That's also behind there. Five, already beeping. Now, how many people see this on tours? If not anyone sees this on tours. 
So it's really hot. It's gonna, and if you get closer, it could rub off on you and stuff. So I'll show you this one even more. Now that's, now think about how much history is in that everyone. That's the same crane used to pick up stuff. I'm gonna zoom in on it for you guys. That's one of the belts, one of the robot remote controls that was used to, to move the debris off. Look at this, really bad now. We're at it, we're at 10. So I'm not gonna go any closer just in case it'll be too dangerous. But I'm just showing you like how that is, how bad that is. So for all you who don't know, there was something called blood forest and the radiation made the trees red. But that's not there no more, but we're gonna pass by right now the, the, the remains of it and we'll see how strong it is. Look at that, it's already beeping. 3.7, 4.0. 5.0 So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed the whole Chernobyl experience. Um, it was like a dream for me to come here. I said I'm gonna do it. I was a little scared at first, but I came here anyway. Uh, I was so I was definitely out of my comfort zone for sure. And but in the end, it worked out perfect. Uh, Chernobyl was exactly how I thought it would be. A bit better though. Um, but the history is definitely sad. And if it wasn't for uh, Solo East Tours, I wouldn't have been able to do this. So check them out. If you liked what you've seen, maybe you'll want to come here too and get the same experience I did. Other than that, I have a plane to catch back to America. I'm not looking forward to it. I hope you enjoyed this because I definitely did. I got to go. I'm bummed out. Five years, uh, even six years. I saw it only twice. Twice. A wolf? Yeah, wolves inside the zone. Hmm. So, wolves. and the wolves weren't big. They were just regular wolves that you regular found. Regular wolves. Uh, they sometimes looks like a dogs. Okay. They looks like a dogs. Uh, another thing. What about like any like overly sized fish or anything like? Uh, yeah, was oversized fish uh, still exist in Poland Channel near the uh, nuclear power plant. In summertime, we feed them. But um, telling the truth, it's a normal size of this fish. Normal size. Okay. Yeah, it's a huge. It's a really huge. It looks like uh, sharks. There you have it, explorers. That's a guy who's in Chernobyl more than anyone else in the world. Um, that's just something we have to go over because a lot of things that people don't know and they just assume like, oh, there's like the crazy over overly grown wolves out there or this is mutated or this and that. But all that is not true. And I already knew this before, but I just wanted to confirm it so I recorded it so you all know. A lot of things, it's just rumors that you see online. People like do these posts and they Photoshop stuff. So it makes you think like, wow, that's in Chernobyl. But it's not, it's not. <laughs> all right, explorers. So in this video, this is like, the prequel, like the, yeah, the, almost like the sequel to the Chernobyl series. So this is like the beginning of the 2.0 series that I'm creating, but this is the behind the scenes of what's coming. I, and when I, when I did, when I did the first series, I, I left all this out. I just showed you the, the raw, the abandoned, and that's what I'm going to do with the, with the next season, which is coming very soon. But I want to do a, a, like a behind the scenes vlog, like a diary before getting there. Just got out of the airport. I haven't slept. You can see my hair. Like I had a whole coffee. I said I was quitting coffee, but I had it. I needed to take the coffee. And right now, um, with, I'm with the tour guide, with my homie from my uh, HK Urbex. His name is Prepiet. He's chilling. It's funny because his name's Prepiet, his code name. But yet, because he's a he, dude, he loved coming here. Like he wanted to come here forever. It was his dream. I said, dude, I'm gonna make this guy's dream reality. I was like, I'm gonna take this guy with me. And he's the one hooking me up with a lot of the B-roll footage that you can see him right now doing this. Thing. Right now we're inside of a village and a lot of the houses here are abandoned and some of them aren't and people who still live here are living here from back in the day when the, you know, the explosion happened. Um, and we're just going around getting to our cottage as well, but it's interesting.
Now, last time I did the whole Chernobyl tour, I didn't stay here. I stayed in another place. So this one's actually new to me, but we're in like a legit raw village. And so we're gonna drop our stuff down and I'm gonna show you around the village and we're just gonna kick it today. And like I said, yeah, this ain't part of like the whole video series I'm doing. This is just some behind the scenes of the big stuff coming. I'm just, you know, chilling. I'm excited. Okay, some more information I wanna talk about. Um, one thing is that right now from the whole Fukushima incident is that scientists came here to Chernobyl and they're planting these these Japanese trees and what they're doing is they're experimenting. It's like a certain tree that is actually absorbing up the soil, the red contaminated soil. So it's extracting and it's all going into the tree and it's cleaning up the soil. So they're learning more about that and it's growing like in a year, it's growing up one meter. So it's growing really fast. So what they're trying to do is like they may, we don't really know what's gonna happen, but we think they're gonna plant a lot of trees in Fukushima and just try to clean up the soil that way just by planting trees. So a lot of scientists are here right now studying and they're doing their own stuff. Another thing that I just found out about is that in Sweden, still from when the Chernobyl reactor blew, is that you still can't even hunt deer in Sweden because they're contaminated with radiation and all these other things. Right now we're just walking through the village and I asked if we can find a local that we can kind of interview because we have a translator with us too and, and see if like we can interview them from the incident and how everything happened and, and why they're still living here. So like I said, we're just roaming and we're just looking. Uh, so Alexander Sirievich uh, proposed to us visit a local library. Uh, there is a uh, quite old lady, she uh, uh, collects some uh, items about uh, exclusion zone, about disaster. So she, probably she right now on uh, lunch time. But ah, uh, we could just hang out yeah, and see. Just, we will visit. Uh, yeah, we'll place. wing it. Maybe we will wait a little bit. Yeah. I mean, guys, we are in a... <laughs> We're in a real village, man. There's no Walmarts here. There's nothing. This is this is it. <laughs> hey, dude, don't. You're never sure. There could be a Walmart right around. <laughs> Yo, for real. In, in Walmart, you're right. I would. That's their library. <laughs> Pretty sweet though. Hey. Dude, this place is, is sweet. It's the crash pad. It's a library and uh, like small, small museum of uh, Children works. I mean, uh, handmade uh, works for children from uh, local schools. Oh yeah. They make some. Uh, let's say school work. Yeah. Right now, the librarian is showing us pictures that kids, you know, and they're you know ten years old, and they're drawing pictures of what you know they didn't live through the incident of Chernobyl, but. What, what what they're learning in school and and you know what happened what they think happened or how they pictured it and dude it's it's pretty it's pretty legit you know that's the reactor that blew and you know the poison going into the water and this one right here you can see like the helicopters are trying to drop the water to stop the fire and this is the smoke but also the they drew it as like a monster and you know it's pretty it's creative but sad at the same time but they didn't live which is great that they didn't live through it but at least you know they're you know the school is just educating them and teaching them on, on what happened she was born in a village which nearby and she uh, she just removed from that village here she was free land. she was husband, uh, built a new house so she stayed here okay um, was does she um man. so was she um like here when the Chernobyl blue? Yeah. Uh, we believe that we were Chernobyl is the one that we were No one okay. evacuated them, so they stay here. So they see a uh, traffic jam, let's say, like this, because it was only one normal road. Actually, this new road, which we just passed to Chernobyl power, uh, to Chernobyl nuclear power plant, because 
Before it, they have old road which uh, goes through all villages, and the uh, bus connection was uh, really bad actually. Oh, so so. Ask her what was she doing when the incident happened. А що ви робили, коли це аварія случилась? Саме садили, сіяли, картошку садили. О, нікуди нічого. So the same work they grow a potato, they grow a vegetables, different stuff. They didn't know about the well, They didn't know anything. Uh, so people in neighboring villages they know about disaster that something happened on nuclear power plant and that's it yeah they don't know about uh, wind pollution about soil water pollution and other pollutions so they it was uh, spring uh, april so uh, they start to uh, dig potatoes they start to start to uh, make seeds so for chicken so. See, they love to live here or they love like they 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 want to come back because of the lifestyle and i'm just I'm just curious because she lives here yeah. before and and still lives here. I'm just wondering. So, what is special about this place that, that people want to live here, no matter what? Чого для вас це місце, ну ваш дом такий унікальний, що вони хоч ну що люди вертаються в зону, люди вертаються після евакуації на це саме місце. Чим він, чим ваш дом? Уникальнейший для вас. Так, а чого кожне, де пташка родиться, туди вона прилітає в гніздо. Так і люди. Де виросли, де прожили все життя, туди кортить їх. Це because it's native land. They grow here, they was born here. Uh, she said like, you know that when uh, birds uh, born in one nest, it's mm. try to return back to make new uh, birds. Make the sense. same, yeah, this is the same, the same situation with people. Mm -hmm. uh, she said that if uh, on that place, uh, government in that time did everything to normal life, I mean, uh, give uh, house in a village, give uh, some kitchen garden for uh, growing uh, some vegetables, food, because all, will, uh, all citizens here, they are farmers. Mm -hmm. It's a style of life. And uh, yeah, probably they will be stay there, but still, uh, so uh, heart will be here. Mm -hmm. So that's why they they stay in here. Hey, bye. Thank you. <laughs> See you. Shibla. Yeah. <laughs> She's a legend. We just got educated on like Pripyat and where the wind blew and and what villages were affected. So let's get on the map now. Okay. All right, so explorers right here is is actually safe. So Pripyat's right here and the, what happened was the wind blew all over here and contaminated all this, all any villagers here all got sick, yada yada. And what happened was then it blew up. It changed course and blew up. So a lot of villages that are even over here are all screwed up from the radiation. You know, birth effects did happen, of course, but Anything that was like under here is actually generally okay. So that's, you know, it's great for everyone here over here. It worked out and, it, and, and it's great to hear that. But from what I've been told now is even over here, just right around here is still contaminated. And what happened was because the wind blew it all over here and, and then the water got affected and it contaminated all over here too. So that's just how it is. But right here, oh man, you're like safe. but. Just making it safe right there.
This place looks abandoned. But on the inside, it's a double door. So you open up one door to open up another door. You know, whatever. But it's all stocked up. You got all the liquor in the world. You got like... Dude, so much different breads and everything. Ah, oh, this is all... Dude, this is amazing. Yeah, it's a, it's a simple village uh, store. It, it's simple, but it's awesome. What, what is what is the whole vodka? Yeah, it's a hell to watch all the other things. It reminds me like we were at the abandoned island in Japan, and we went inside the stores, and it was pretty much just set up the same exact way like this. There was a lot of rumors going out after the incident happened, how like vodka apparently would like help you due to radiation, and like that was true. Like something about drinking lots of vodka, if you're contaminated would help you right so all the villagers would start drinking all the vodka but end up just hurting them more because it damaged their liver more than actually helping them that beer is on another level that's huge that's like drinking a, that's like a gallon of beer I'm so that is, uh, two, liters of two liters of beer <laughs> two, two liters of beer it's like getting a huge soda from the market okay so what I want to do right now is fly my new drone in the air. I've just got the Mavic Air. Look how, dude, so small. Now when the Mavic Pro came out, I was like, this is the best drone ever, and I have still have never used a Phantom 4 since I got the Mavic Pro. But now they got a drone that's even smaller than the Mavic Pro, and it's the Mavic Air, which if you watch the vlog Hong Kong, which if you watch the vlog in Hong Kong, that's what the, when they gave it to me, which made my bag overflow, and I had to pay all these extra weight bills just because the drone and yeah, I had so much other stuff. It was a nightmare, dude. But it's okay, because I got the Mavic Air. But I don't even know how to use it. And that's what we have to figure out. I thought today was, would be a good day. Oh my god, this is small. Because, oh my god, this is really small. Dude, what the hell? Okay, now how do I use it? The propellers are already on, which is great. Yeah, we gotta figure this out. But we're flying it, and you know what I figured out? Well, alright, this I'm assuming. We're the first ones to fly the Mavic Air in Chernobyl. We have to be. We have to be the first ones to be flying this. This drone came out very recent and yeah, we're, we, I know, all right, I already know. We're the first ones to fly the Mavic Air in Chernobyl. Boom. I'm claiming that and you're gonna see it right here in this video. Let's just try to fly. Let's see how the footage looks. I'm so curious. The danger is supposed to be the most contaminated room in all of like Pripyat, right here. This is the room that we could not go in before with, uh, Misha, and I'm, not, I'm still not gonna step in. If I even step over this, it's gonna destroy my shoes and everything. But oh, oh my, just being here, 57, 100. Just being right here. Is, I'm not Explorers, this is Misha from the first time we went to Chernobyl two years ago. Dude, you lost weight, man. He's, he's good, too. Dude, a lot of you explorers remember him and, and actually took pictures with him and seen him and gave him a shout out. So that's awesome that you guys are watching. So they must have came because of the vids. Yeah. Like the videos that they seen and they, they came. Yeah. So they got inspired by the vids that, that they yeah, seen. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Dude, that's crazy. <laughs> Dude, yeah, man. Nice. Yeah, we yeah, we're doing some crazy stuff, man. I know. Yeah. You, you know, know that these days a lot of stuff is better. I know. It's, it's, yeah. yeah, I'm glad we went where we did. Yeah. This is probably the, who knows if we'll be able to do what I'm doing again like yeah. this. So here's the first checkpoint. They even check your cars to make sure you don't got drones and all this other stuff. They're really strict on it. So during the checkpoints, they pretty much uh, ask you for your passport. They make sure the number's correct. And they ask you all these other questions like, do you have a drone and stuff like that? And yeah. Heading up to our second checkpoint now, and as we're coming through it, just going down the road, you see all the abandoned villages, all the people that used to live here, and just all the trees are just falling all over them and everything. Hey, just found another market. That's cool. Now we're approaching the second gate, and there's actual signs right there. You can see the radiation signs. Right there is an unfinished cooling tower for reactors five and six, which are right over there.
So all the workers that work at the Chernobyl plant live inside the blue house. And they actually change their clothes twice a day. And like I said, the, the, the radiation levels aren't that bad. It's not even bad at all. It, it's safe to work there, surprisingly. Even though that's where the accident happened that blew up, that destroyed, that destroyed everything. It's safe to still work there. It is so crazy to be out here though, like, I'm back, it's been two years! I remember going through this road the first year, I'm just like, mind-blowing, like, I'm alone in the city, and here we are again, we're back, and just, you can see the living quarters, like, all the houses. Alright, so what we're doing is, is to me, is like, mind-blowing, I'm, I'm like, oh man, I'm like, scared a little bit, but we are going into the basement of, pre, of the Pripyat's hospital, which is one of the most contaminated rooms in all of Pripyat. We have like these suits we're gonna put on, um, hazmat suits, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, we're gonna experience it. And last time I was with Misha, remember I was like, I wanna go in there so bad, but I'm not gonna be stupid. But this time, we're doing it, 100%. Uh, we're ready. Oh man, I can't believe we're doing this. Like, I, can, I guess I can claim that I've been in one of the most contaminated rooms in the world. And yeah, it's gonna happen right now. Yeah. Okay, get on this. <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's go. That's our guy. That's our boy. That's our boy. Oh, uh, Davis. I'm really bad at it, so it's a bad idea. Oh my god. Oh. We're back in the hospital. Look, uh, a few, like maybe one year ago, video in YouTube appeared. Some crazy people drive bicycle. Bicycle in the basement. In the basement? Yes. The hell? Yeah, and the uh, entrance has been blocked. Oh, they blocked entrance ever since. Yeah. Now, hang on. Yeah, just check this out. See, like I said, we still have all the medicine here. There's keys here. Patients uh, stuff is still here. Everything. But we have one mission and that's to get inside this basement. So why is the basement the most contaminated room? It's because all the firefighters clothes are down there. I have the Geiger counter and this their sleeve right here. Let me just show you. That is over 111 microzevers. That's insane. I mean, like I read some of the stories, like I read one of the wives who uh, had to stay with, his hus with her husband, you know, for 14 days. And when I see this, I see something that a hero wore. He gave his life. And if he didn't do what he did, uh, I mean, Kiev wouldn't exist. Parts of Europe wouldn't even exist. So, I mean, like, it's really overwhelming being here because, I mean, I wanted to come here, but at the same time, there's such a, there's so much suffering, yeah. you know, behind this place. And I'm just trying to, I'm trying to, like, take it a step at a time, man. Yeah, no, it is insane. Uh, cheers. Cheers. Another day. Don't worry, if it gets too deadly, I'll tell you, but you first. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, now we're fucking doing it. Now we're, yeah, we're doing oh, wait, it. Oh, wait, hang on. Uh, Amanda, I'm sorry, that's my wife. I'm sorry, but I had to do this. Oh my god. Okay. Alright, so far the meters are still good. We're entering now. Ooh. I'm gonna make it brighter. The heck is this? Oh, eight micro zevers on whatever this is. This is soil, I think, on the ground. Oh my god. Got some boots. Oh, they ain't the firefighters' boots, that's for sure. Alright, so remember how I said that the door was blocked? So. Because the other side is blocked, we had to take the other entrance in the basement now, pretty much walking where we were above through the snow, getting to the other side right now. Eventually we're going to come up to what I think, and what everyone told me, is just a bunch of firefighters' shoes and everything, and that's how you know we're there. It's going to be an insane area though. Dude, it's, it's at 10 micro zevers right now, 21 micro zevers. 24. Dude, if we had the other guy counter, this would be beeping like crazy. This one doesn't beep, which is good. It doesn't make an annoying sound. 77 micro zevers. Oh my god. All of this. Just laying here, too. Yeah, don't stop, man. Dude, we're at 81. Oh my god. What happened? Oh my. Dude, se is that 700? 900. 900. Oh my, I never seen those before. I never seen those numbers. That's the highest I've ever seen out of any guy counter. More than 1 millisievert. 1 1.2 thousand. Oh so my god. Ma uh, millisievert. Now it's already millisievert. Yeah, we're in a sievert, right? Wait, is it is it 100,000 to make one sievert? Yeah, so one one millisievert it is one thousand micro zeros. But one divert is one thousand millisievert. So here you can see one hundred forty five yep. micro. Yep. One hundred micro. Oh my god. Obviously whoever wore this shoe died like right away. So, one millisievert. One, one millisievert. 1.1. 1. 1. Oh my god. So bad. And sad, dangerous, everything. Right Explorers, right now we are in the air. Right. right now, just being right here, it's our 20 micro zevers. This is the dangerous, supposed to be the most contaminated room in all of like Pripyat. Right here. This is the room that we could not go in before with. Uh, Misha, and I'm, not, I'm still not going to step in. If I even step over this, it's going to destroy my shoes and everything. But oh, oh my, just being here, 57, 100. Just being right here. Is, I'm not, we can't even be here this long. This is insane. No, this is insane. This is unbelievable. This is stuff I've, I've only ever seen, like, I think BioNerd came here. I never got to see this place in person, but right here is just all their clothes they use, the, the firefighters use. To try to put out that fire in Chernobyl, the reactor that blew. Yeah, they dumped it here. And they, they just, yeah. They just dumped all their clothes right here. They, they didn't know what to do with it all. Well, they knew what to do with it. They got, they got rid of it and run the fuck away. Yeah. Jeez. Just this room, just putting your hand in here. 100 micro zeverts. Jeez. Yeah, so the mattresses that the firefighters laid on are just thrown in here as well. This is the next what's room. What's it, what's it, what's it. Okay, yeah, I'm watching it. Trying to put... This one ain't as bad, but I don't even want to step over there to find out how bad can it get. Uh, right now I'm only reading a three, which is a lot better than that room, that's for sure. Let's bring it down here. 
Oh, 20 micro zebras on this one. Right now, 22. Jeez, I'm not even touching it all the way. I don't want to. But yeah, even the doctors that were working on the patients, the firefighters, they had skin problems. Their fingers, just from touching and dealing with them. Oh, and I, yo, this is the room I wanted to do last uh, two years ago. I was like, I want to come here. I want to come here. We finally did it. I don't know what this is, but it looks like maybe one of their coats came right out of the freaking uh, mattress room that they were laying on. You bring it up to this one as well. And we are hitting. Oh, man. A hundred micro sieverts. Oh, my God. Okay. That's good enough for me. I, I think I'm okay with being here. Yeah. I don't want to take in more than a freaking year's worth anymore of the radiation in one day. And it's from the big town. Well, in a way, it's a big town and a huge hospital and a tiny, tiny morgue. Because they were so, like, I don't know, they were so joyful they had, like, old town and dream. And then tiny, tiny morgue. Huh. It's like... Yeah, they I didn't even know there was a morgue in this hospital because when I came here, I seen so much, but I've never seen the morgue. So I think I was so focused on trying to go into that basement last time that I didn't even know there was a morgue. So now we're gonna see the morgue. Got distracted here. This is the delivery room where they're giving birth. It's actually got worse than the last time I came here. He knows the story. Yeah, right here is the abortion book. Pretty much all the records of, you know, people who had their abortions done. The date is... 1979. Something that was supposed to be private, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is supposed to be private for sure, but maybe someone wants to read some of them. But the abortion were official at that time. Yeah, it was official, but... No, it was absolutely official abortion. Mm. Of some uh, billing agency, Embryon was eight weeks old. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't remember seeing this last time I came. That's cool. One thing I want to throw into the, uh, the abortions is that after um, the whole incident happened in, in Chernobyl, uh, the Soviet Union told everyone who, who was pregnant that they had to get rid of all the babies. Oh, in case of a, the, a war happened? So, uh, it's, uh, we had civilian defense license. Yeah, even, I remember that. Even for, we still have for elderly. Yeah. Even for elderly people. So, even babushkas, you know, old ladies yep. were taught how to use gas mask, how to uh, be in a bomb shelter, you know. Yeah. How yeah. to decontaminate stuff. Yeah, so. Uh, people back in the day, the Soviet Union, they had these programs where in case of an accident happened or a terrorist attack, they were, they were ta taught how to wear gas masks, told where to go and what to do. And I think you guys even learn how to like reload your guns and stuff as well yeah. too when you're kids. Yeah, we still are, like, we are taught that thing. Yeah, in America, we're, we're not taught any of that. So technically now, after this, I've done a total of four days in Chernobyl. Well, pre piet everything, I did the whole thing. And we've done only the best of the best. Like I said, hey, I want to see the best this, the best that, the best this. I mean, we're obviously missing some things, or maybe we're missing a lot of things, but we're only showing the best. So at least you can say that, yeah, we've done the best of this. And so I don't have to really ever come back here anymore after this, because I was so bummed about seeing, not seeing certain things. And now that I came back here, yeah, I think I've seen the best of the best total. So I'm not probably ever going to come back here unless I want to do like a photo shoot here and maybe make a book out of it or something. And yeah, I took my boy here who's getting me a lot of the B-roll shots for this video. So it's really, it's really cool. But every room that we're walking through always has something cool to see. Like, look, example, I just walked and seen this. There's tons of stuff here. We're always gonna miss something. We're not gonna see everything. And that's, you know, where my curiosity hurts the most. And it's like, damn, well, I can't see this. Well, I want to see this. And it's like a fight with your mind. And it's a rush against time as well.
This should be the morgue. It's in a whole nother building away from the hospital, by the way. So this is the room where bodies were uh, laid. It's quite dark. They, do, they don't need the windows. The morgue is in a building by itself, away from the hospital, which is really smart. Hospital's right there. Morgue's here. I guess another reason why I wasn't able to see it the last time we came here. Oh yeah, we have like microscope samples. Like you would put like, you know, DNA or whatever onto this and then put it into the microscope, see what's going on. <laughs> oh, dude. What's that? So sick. <laughs> Get out of here. That's... Get out. What? All right, hang on. Someone explain what we're looking at. Yeah, can someone please? Huh? So they don't get an LCD here. LCD? Yeah. What's that? That's something that makes you happy. <laughs> oh, L LSD. Oh, LSD! Yeah. In all the abandoned places I've ever went to, I've never seen, like... I don't, I don't even know what these are, but it's definitely something in humans. The embryos? I don't know. I don't know what any of that is. One of it looks like, like someone's tooth or something. I don't... I don't know. A lot of this is not in English. I don't know what it says. I, I really just want to know what these are. I, I don't. Th to be honest, I don't even think our guides know what these are. Cause this is like really like out of like this is something to do with like your body, and it doesn't even say what it says on it. I don't even know. This is some Cronenberg. Yeah, it looked like little. <laughs> I mean, whatever it was in our bodies, is just it's been there for so long. Like no one knows what that is. <laughs> Can we take it any uh, okay, okay, here's the autopsy room. Yeah, so if, obviously we've been to so many morgues, I don't even have to explain myself what a morgue is, but yeah, the morgue is where they examine the bodies and then freeze them after they, you know, found out what their cause of death was. And the cause of death and whatever they're doing examining is we're in those jars that we were just seeing. And the blood gets drained. Somewhere, this should be a pipe or something, where the blood was getting drained, something like right, yeah, right here. The blood's getting dripped and drained through this, down on the ground into God knows where. Now I got to, now I've got to say I explored the whole entire hospital in Pripyat. A little doll. Oh man, it's freaky. Oh, it works. You're the you're the crazy one to want to touch it. Little eyes. For real, right? Jeez. Yeah, this is a room I've never been able to see on a tour, ever. This this place is sick. They love to live here, or they love like they 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 want to come back because of the lifestyle. And I'm just I'm just curious because she lives here yeah. before and and still this year. I'm just wondering. So what is special about this place that, that people want to live here no matter what? Check him out. Just roaming the streets of Pripyat, you're gonna find everything out here. Even even Bieberman. Yeah. Still, I mean, it's just still insane. Like. We're in an abandoned city, so everything you walk through, it's a, it's abandoned. It's you can film everything. I mean, it won't, it won't end. I mean, that's for this guy. He's like, oh my god, this is too much to film. We're walking into a gymnasium. Oh, yeah, they're prepets. They, you know, they're all known to make like these amazing murals. Jeez. This is a huge gym. Not very small. <laughs> yeah, very big. And explorers, we just found this walking. Like you just walk the streets and you're gonna find everything. Looks like it was an old trampoline right there.
Yeah, just to show you the comparison, look how small they are compared to this place. There's so much to see. How do we see it all at this, in two days? There's no way. <laughs> I, can't do, I can't take it, man. It's too much to see. I'm like, I almost can't start filming because I just know there's so much else to film. I know, I know. We're just hustling through. Again, this is everyone's families and homes where they all lived. We're passing by so many of these buildings as we walk. Yeah, just crazy how, you know, when the yeah. incident happened, everyone just had to up and leave and Ditch everything they own, all unexpectedly. Also, in Pripyat, when Pripyat was built, they built Pripyat to be like heaven. They wanted everyone that, that was here to be like almost rich. You know, they, it was like the place, it's like literally the place to be. So if you're here, it means, yeah, you made it. When I was in Misha, we were looking inside and I was so jealous because it was like, I wanted to go in, but everything was so mint. Like... All the stuff is lined up, their pencils and pens are like on the desk. It's insane. Now, this time, we're going in. Because honestly, if I don't go in now, that's it. It's gone for good. And Misha was like, it's too dangerous, you can't go in. Uh, my homies right here, they're like, we're going in, so I'm going in. Yeah, we're going right up into school one. Okay. Have you ever been in here? <laughs> nice. It's an adventure for you too. Quite a bit. That's always an adventure. Every single tour you can have maybe the same. It's gonna be different always. Yeah. So you cannot say like you've been on a tour and you've seen everything and it's gonna be just like you've seen it today. Tomorrow is gonna to be absolutely different. You cannot make two absolutely the same tours. Huh. Every single room is just all full of their desks and stuff. But some of them look way better than others as we go. Every single corner will fall in the pot. Yeah. Every single corner will fall in the pot. Yeah, I know. This, this is... We gotta be careful here. What is it? Yeah. Library. Yeah, so, this is a history now. It is for us to keep it and film it. But when this place collapsed, we're gonna have this video to show the library of this school one. The, the place is packed with books. Actually, down here, you have to belong just at least to, before you die, you show the video. English. Yeah. If I die right now, someone has to edit this vid. Oh, look at it. You had even propaganda. Seriously, there's a lot of books in, here. In this thing, like, <laughs> keep, uh, students play. Like, uh, <laughs> keep it. You can see it's really not safe to walk over there. But it could be safe to go this way. Huh? Oh, we got some we got some good stuff. You see it everywhere. Yeah, look at this. Made it. They didn't even win the second. Dude, everyone was so brainwashed, it's insane. Yeah? What is in here? On this vinyl. Learning speech, of course. Learning speech? Learning, learning speech. Speech of that man. Oh, okay. One of the keys from the hospital. Dude, he looks, he looks freaky. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want that postcard for myself. Who were pioneers? Pioneers. Pioneers. The pioneers is young, young communist organization. You know, they were proud they are pioneers, you know. They, they, oh, they, look at this. They are uh, communists in the future. It's like... Yeah, they're all brainwashed. It's like everyone's the same, you know? Like they're just one family. Yes. All just strong no, communists. No private properties, you know? Yep. All people, all government, all mine. All mine. Yeah. Guys, so right now, because um, she knows more than me on this, but the kids were going to school here since th three months old, right? Yeah, this was about the kindergarten. So you didn't uh, 
really bring up child in your family because you have some ideas you want to uh, child look like you and so on and have some thoughts and even speech like you have and the child is growing up just like a part of community you're just like well just part of this huge system and there's no chance that your child goes to school and says my mom said she doesn't like Lenin or something because everyone will like it's that's gross yeah. you have no chance to say that that's dude that's I didn't even know this the first time I came so that's so good to, to learn more and yeah it's mind-blowing so this is a postcard of uh, pretty much celebration of the Second World War Soviet Union. Souvenir. Huh? Yeah. It's just all books about the same guy. Like, why are kids just learning guy, about... Right? Yeah, I know, but geez. <laughs> why just learn about this one guy? It's your family. Oh, geez. <laughs> Wait, where? <laughs> what, even his, even his face! Can you tell me about him? Uh, <laughs> oh, look at that! Igor, tell me about this guy that everyone wants to learn about. Uh, we should say uh, Lenin is still alive. She still lives in our hearts, you know. That time. Okay. In, in the Soviet Union. Did you, like, did you really at that time believe? What? What? You I know, mean, did you believe the propaganda? You know, uh, children believed, I guess. Yeah. But uh, people, uh, uh, which uh, I, I guess, uh, so we were so tired, so tired. We did not pay attention. Sure. You know, when uh, I uh, I heard the word Lenin, brain switch switched off. You know, it's because it's all the same, all the same. He's the best. He's this. He's that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just left school one, and now we're entering a kindergarten. <clears throat> it actually almost just looks like school one, but yeah, it's a whole different place. Dream it about this. A little doll. Oh man, it's freaky. Oh, it works. You're the you're the crazy one to want to touch it. Yeah, there is. A lot of dolls, jeez. And all their shoes. Little eyes. For real, right? Jeez. So Lenny was in, in each single room. Have a look. Oh, another one. Yo, you're right. He's like Jesus, the God. <laughs> For real. Over here, obviously, is where they slept. You know? Ah, their beds. They take their naps. For me in kindergarten, I was only in kindergarten for three hours, and then that's it. We didn't have nap time or anything like that. Yeah. Right here was their lockers. Yeah. Look at the amount of dust. I've never seen that much. I mean, you can't even see their eyes. The amount of dust that's on this doll. That is just pristine and untouched. Like, it's just been here for so long. The feelings you get when you walk through this city is just mind-blowing. It's, it can be exciting, and it can be like a true adventure. I mean, it really is a true adventure walking through Pripyat. But at the same time, just remember the history and the horrible events that took place here. And it can get very upsetting and really sad at the same time. But it is like you're walking through frozen time. But, but it's really like walking through time, and it's frozen. We're still seeing everything in here. It's a, it's a, 
crazy feeling. It's really like living through a movie. Being able to go to both Chernobyl and Fukushima is a, almost like a weird privilege. You know, like, it's a true adventure for sure. Both very, very crazy, very upsetting, and, and, again, and again, in both very different cultures, very different places, but both same tragic accident. The reactor blew and caused radiation to spur everywhere and causing everyone to leave and just leave everything behind. Very upsetting. And it all, all because of nuclear power plants. And it's just crazy that, that it even happened. But this is like kind of what we do. We, we like to explore the unknown and risk our lives at the same time. But the, it's just like the rush of adrenaline you get doing it is like insane. It's a true, it's a real, seriously, it's like a true adventure doing this. And it's the, it's the best reward you can get. And I, I just love to document while doing it. I love to be able to film this because the place that we're filming right now could be completely gone and demolished five years from now. But we still have this video to prove. Like this is what was here and, and everything before things change. I will say, like I'm 100% I'm serious. This is my last time going to anything that has radiation there. I'm done with it. I did Fukushima, I've done this place. There's so much more abandoned places out there and I'm gonna make sure to just keep going to those places now. Um, this is only, I mean I only had four days in Chernobyl, but we've done many series here and it's a mission to get here, it really is. And even in Fukushima, it's a freaking mission to do that as well. So I, I just can't believe the things that we've been seeing in this world and it's, I don't even know where I'm going with this message, but when, you, when you're in my shoes and you do this for a living, you start thinking a lot of crazy things and it's just like, whoa. And you, if you feel like you've seen it all. It's almost as if you've seen like, you know what I'm saying? Like nothing will phase you anymore. Remember the first time I came here, I was still new. I had like half a million subscribers and I was like, um, I was mind blown. I'm like, I can't believe this. Now, you know, two years later after doing some of the most craziest places on earth. I come back here and I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, like you, you've grown so much that it's like, it doesn't phase you no more. I'm here and I'm, it's not even like, oh yeah, I'm super excited or, 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 not, or, or not, I'm not even sad either at the same time. I'm just like, yeah, this is what it is. This is reality now. I've seen so much of this, so much tragic events happen. I, this is it. Like it becomes like, it doesn't become new. And, and I'll hear so much stories of why places are abandoned due to this reason, due to that reason. It's like, oh, okay. Because it's just, it's normal now, everything. All the abandoned places are just like, all upsetting, but normal. I mean, we've been doing so many of them. Now it's like, what's next? How many more abandoned places are we gonna do? And even me, I don't know, but I still have like a hundred spots alone in the United States. I still have all of Egypt to do, Morocco. I still have China. There's just so many. So in this channel, I try to keep it new and exciting. And that's why I'm like, well, what can I do to keep it new and exciting? And it's like, I'm gonna keep visiting these places, but what else can I do? What, can else, what else can I bring to the table? And the only thing I could think of is just editing with a new style, getting better with my edits, learning how to color correct and just Keep going and see how it goes. Explorers, thanks for supporting, thanks for watching. This is just a random message and we're gonna keep going now. I don't know where, where this went, but I hope you understood what I was saying because I didn't know what I was saying. <laughs>
the whole abandonedness and you know like i don't know i guess the, the love for silent hill resident evil you know that whole apocalyptic thing kind of plays a role in it too but just the art of adventuring and going out there and filming these things that normally people don't ever go to or see and you know and just the risk of exploring in general you know it's kind of like you put that all together and it's like boom chernobyl pops up and you know to go there the first time i released a video was or even going there first place was back in March when I released the first video, March 16th, 2016. So yeah, the get powerful. Yeah, they passed the race. Two or three uh, mm, meters thick wall. Yeah. And they are just coming out passing through us right now as right we speak. Now. Yeah, as we speak. <laughs> As we stand here. You hear that? Right now we are getting hit with radiation, but it's such a low dose. Yeah. But it's coming out of there right now, hitting us. And this and this can even prove it to you right here. That it is coming out, but it's see how low, oh, see how low it drops when you put it behind the wall? And it blew right up. I mean, I hit a million views overnight on it, and it wasn't really about the views. It was just me wanting to make my own documentary and document my own time being there. And I loved it, and it was very emotional, but no way, also exciting at the same time. <laughs> it it oh, was man. exciting because you're inside this whole city by yourself, but it was also emotional because the whole reason why it's abandoned in the first place and you know i i generally had an amazing time there and i learned a lot about everything including the radiation side of it and it was just a crazy adventure i never forgot and being alone out there traveling by myself being young too it was just an incredible experience overall when i came back uh, this time around for you know the experience was a lot different I've already, I already knew I wasn't as excited I just wanted to film more professionally um, get different angles and, and do things that I, I never did the first time building a good reputation with the, the Chernobyl uh, tourism people um, they allowed me to go inside places that normally they might not want to, to go into and they're you know that we, we built a relationship so going to the the second time was just overall a crazy experience as well because we went to places that I never thought I was going to go into. Example, the nuclear power plant. Uh, going inside there was was amazing and wearing the all the you know the white science outfit and <laughs> covering your head up. It, it was really interesting and also exciting. Like yo, I can't believe I'm doing this right now. This is awesome. Yeah. And but also oh, you know um, I wasn't um, as emotional at all actually. Uh, the second time around, I kind of like accepted it and being like a whole like two years after that, I've been to so many other abandoned places including Fukushima that I became sort of numb to everything and and it was like, yeah, like this is very dark, it's sad, but it wasn't really affecting me anymore because of all the, the crazy things I've been seeing for the past last two years. Not really, I wouldn't say dull. It was super cool and exciting, but I kind of like, I'm so familiar with all this. I know like so much about it. It was just the whole exciting part about doing different things that normally I would never see or do and documenting it for everyone. I love documenting and I think I did a lot better on this Chernobyl than the last one because I, it became way more professional, great background music, different angles, close-ups. You know, I, I, I learned how to, you know, I got better at filming and stuff and uh, it's a crazy adventure, Explorers. I just want to thank you guys for watching the series and hope you guys do enjoy did enjoy it and I hope you guys will keep continue on watching. We're squatted up and we're walking to the amusement park. Like I said, we gotta show our homie. He hasn't been here before. Um, I already, dude, it's so weird. I already know how to get there. Like I already know where to go and everything. Right there's the supermarket. Over here on this side is um, the museum. Wait, what's that? The, the art museum? No, that is the oh, community center. Oh, community, I know what it is. All right, all right, all right, I remember, I remember. And over there is the community center. And inside there, they have this, this sick ass gym. And this dan that oh, over there was a dance floor too. And inside that room, there's like an amazing like art, like floors, walls, all full of art in there. Any abandoned amusement park is always gonna be amazing. But Chernobyl's doesn't have anything really left. But it's just Chernobyl. So it's, it's good no matter what. Ugh, walking to the bumper cars again. Yeah, look how different it looks with the snow. and It's way colder. You know, when the snow's gone, it's all like green and watery and brown and nasty. It's all hidden. 
it's unfortunate that I really explored all the best stuff here, so I'm just kind of just going through it all over again, but this time with snow everywhere. But it doesn't, it, it doesn't get old, man. This place is still special to me. And honestly, I'm super happy because my friend, like he's uh, Andrew, who's with us right now and he's filming, he has been wanting to come to Chernobyl for his whole life. It's like his dream to come here. And when he told me about that, and I mean, even his gamer tag and everything is pre yet. Like, he'd been wanting to come here forever. And I had the power to bring him. And I was like, he needs to come. I gotta make his dream come true. Like, that's literally like his dream. I was like, I gotta take this guy here. So to me, it's like I'm doing a good deed at the same time. So it makes me feel good. <laughs> Apparently, there's a spot in the Ferris wheel that's still highly contaminated. Let's, Let's get it. I, yeah, I, never, I never knew this. This is good. And uh, Andrew mentioned that, yeah, it's still very yellow. Like, everything else is all rusted and and deteriorating but yet the yellow color still maintains and it makes it look really iconic I guess or it's hot spot so let's see it here what do you say it's pretty low in boring right yeah yeah 0 0.43 microsieverts nothing special nothing. to show let's go here see something 0 special 0.45 nothing nothing let's go here and wait a second no what, what do you see how it you see the dot? Yeah, it's 424 microsieverts. Exactly. How? Any, look, is there any reason? No, like, and wait a second. There is some lovely particle digged in with dust and rain and so on. So you just, well, log it there and someone might be lucky to have a see there. So Dude, just don't end up being touching there. that either. Yeah. That's a and that's a high dose. There. Yeah. Jeez. I'm I'm always looking for abandoned stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm always looking for a place that has no people that's been left behind, but this is like the ultimate of that. Yeah. But I I'm just overwhelmed by the sadness of it. Yeah. Like it's sort of in a way it's what I always wanted and it was at the cost of all that same with Fukushima you're saying there's mm -hmm. two places like this where there's it's not just a building it's a whole city. Yeah. And yet it's so bittersweet. It's I can't, there's some, I mean, obviously I can't really enjoy it. I mean, I am enjoying it, but you just, every room you enter is someone's Boy. family. It's a, it's a story that came to this really sad end, you know, or it's still, it's still sad. So I don't know. There's such mixed feelings when I'm standing here. Yeah. You know how to, I mean, how look should, at that. there you go. I mean, there's a, yeah, the school. Yeah. Look at that. The school. That's what, that's what people came to expect. These were. These were like the youngest, brightest people. They were, you know, young couples, pregnant wives, and they came here. They're like, "This is where we're gonna start our life," and then, and then this happens, you know. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's just, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's hard to even me. find words yeah, yeah. to describe it because you you would only know unless you came here for yourself. Because it's it's weird, really. It's it's literally weird. I mean, imagine you being in an abandoned city. Yeah. It's and it's not even they didn't it's not it's like everywhere we go it's usually abandoned by choice yeah like Fukushima and here it's abandoned by tragedy yeah you know, t like tragedy beyond anything we can imagine mm -hmm. so but it's still really cool <laughs> yeah it's still yeah. really it cool is. We, we hunt for a single room every single one of these is a room that we're usually like traveling an hour to get to something like this and every single one is not just a room it's still got all the stuff yeah it's still got the whole life it's still got the the kids photos and like their drawings yeah. i don't know yeah it's overwhelming it's uh it's finally it's, hit me man yeah <laughs> it, it, i think it's it's literally standing here well talking it's finally hitting me well now we're also about to enter the school who has all the gas masks inside yeah. so you're gonna like that oh yeah right now and inside the school, in the middle, the, the, it's the, one of the only spots that the soil hasn't been changed. The huh. soil is the same soil from, oh, the, from the accident. You're my guide now, because you've been here. The people living here, the We're back. Ah, this room. Jeez, it's still crazy to see though, really. It's just freaky because they're small children's gas masks. I mean, it's the size of my hand, look. 
find new spots that I haven't done yet and he mentioned to me that there's a tank around here. So that's what we're gonna go to next. We're gonna try to find this tank. We are trekking through the snow right now. <laughs> Chernobyl hikes. We're squatted up. There's no one around this. Whenever, whenever I'm with my, my Chinese family, they're like, okay, we ate dinner, let's go. Instead of like, let's sit and just be with each other. We can just be with each other right now. In this insane place. So to be with each other, you have to be I like that you're amazing. Right That's here. amazing. No, this is amazing. I mean, I'm just, <laughs> it's just where we are. I mean, yeah. And, you know and who we're with. And, and yeah. look, if you didn't start talking about uh, your best moment here in Chernobyl, about market, if that didn't happen, yeah. and mm -hmm. if I didn't try to listen to it, I didn't fall down, I would have the same <laughs> True. Thing. Yeah. So supermarket True. also, like yesterday's story, is connected to what is happening here now. Jeez. <laughs> One. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is like Pripyat fever or something. You should do it. You should, you should join us. You should join us, bro. I know how you go back. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Should I pull or push? <laughs> Break her neck. Pull. Break her neck. <laughs> we just ended up at a scrapyard. Now this scrapyard is full of obviously you can see cranes, trains, cars, metal, but it's all highly contaminated. Obviously due to the radiation when the reactor when the, when the reactor blew, and it's all still left here and it hasn't been cleaned. Um, you're not supposed to even be here, by the way. So we're just here. We're just scoping it out. I don't want it gonna be clean, you know. Yeah. So it's not point seventy. Yeah, point oh, seventy. Let's the... check what. What is here? Not bad, to be honest. Yeah, it's actually not that bad for being in the the whole incident. It's only one micro receiver. It's being cleaned. Oh, that's your key. Maybe explored. Huh. Yeah, it's really not that bad. At all, yeah. <coughs> so this is highly protected armored vehicles. Yeah. Which, you know, save soldiers inside, you know. You know what, if this was here when the reactor blew it's pretty it's pretty good actually it's not that contaminated at all it was brought here yeah uh, to fight uh, uh, against consequences consequences aftermath okay so you know gotta get a side view huh. so instead this has a claw Every single car that we've been seeing, every crane here, every train, is all used in the transportation and cleanup. And but this is the third time. So the first two, like whole bunch of like cars and stuff, were obviously put into the scrapyard and then buried underground. But the third time, when after actually you know they cleaned up most of it, still this is still used in the cleanup process. They're all put here. All right, so this is the grand finale. This is where we end the whole entire 2.0 Chernobyl series. We're going up to building 16, climbing on the roof. There's a Soviet Union symbol, by the way. And then we are going to be the first ones to fly the Mavic Air in Chernobyl. I'm the first one right here. Me. I'm the first one to fly the Mavic Air, the brand new drone in Chernobyl. That's going to be some bragging rights. But anyways, yeah, we're doing it. We're going to get we're going to get uh, drone shots of Chernobyl. Um, when I came here the first time, I did not even have a drone yet. So finally, I have a drone so I can fly my drone here. Uh, I only have one battery, so it dies in 17 minutes, by the way, and I only ever flew it once. So I don't even know how these shots are going to be, and it's getting late, but we're going to try anyway.
so freaking cold right now. I flew the drone, it died even quicker than it should because it's so cold. My batteries are dying, but we've been up here just chit chatting and talking and just, again, looking at the views of this place. But the air did its job, and I think I'm the first one to fly my drone air here. Tank, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do I know? Because of this thing right here, man. Look at that. Guns are blazing with this thing. It's an old school tank. Is it? Is it any any contamination in it? Let's check. Mmm, here are the one micro zebrits. Nope, not bad at all. 16. 16. Wow, okay. Got that good X right now. So, you know, better to check uh, radiation in hidden places where rain and the snow can, uh, cannot Can't uh, touch it. it. To wash, wash it, it down. down. Okay. All right. All right. I take back what I said. We're ending it here at this spooky freaking house in the middle of the forest. <laughs> Look at it. It looks like a colonial um, house in the United States. And it's about to be dark in 40 minutes, so we have to hurry up. Whoa, we got cages here. Cages for minks. Huh. A little animal. Yeah. Uh, with or by uh, contaminated fish. And minks also were checked. So they would do experiments on the contaminated animals here. Wow. In the year 2000. In the year 2000. So after the power plant exploded. Yeah. Yes, okay. But then uh, this experiment was shut down in 2000 because they took all, all data they need for years, you know. Also run, run out of money. Also levels of radiation have been decreased for many thousands of times. So it was stopped to use it in 2000. Wow, that's interesting though, dude. They tested on the animals here. And the cages are still here. Look at number 155. Number 182, it's like if you have rats and you're testing animals like medicine on the rats and you have the, you, you numbered them. It's interesting though. You know, you gotta understand like when this happened, they didn't know like what was gonna happen to the animals or like what does radiation do to them. So they're testing it out and seeing, you know, what do they do and how do they react to this radiation and what happens over time to them. So they're in here testing them out and seeing how it works and it's, it's interesting. I, we just noticed this, we're about to leave, but look at these cages on this side. They're massive. They're big, yeah. yeah, they're huge. Oh my god. Uh, can't tell if that's like manure or something. Maybe for like, yeah, I don't know. I wonder what animal would go in this one. I mean, there are any, any animals. Any animals that ate fish would be inside here. The contaminated fish. But at first, this was just, you know, a fish pool, like multiplying fish, making more fish, and now they turn I mean, into that. I mean, the people who had to deal with the fire and had to deal with the, you know, the actual explosion, and you know, I mean, they they had that acute radiation poisoning. Whereas these guys were testing what happens if you eat it, and you're eating like little tiny bits. And you yeah. Have a little alpha radiation inside you. So, I mean, no. it makes sense what they were doing. Yeah. But and think about the look how, how many how many animals they had here though. Look how far down it goes. Yeah. And you said they were doing it since uh, up until 2000, right? Yeah. So the the rule of of being in Chernobyl is that you have to be out by 7 p.m. It's 6:26 right now, and we have to rush out to the front gate. So in like one minute, we're just gonna go. We're just gonna see stuff. We're gonna get the heck out because it's yeah. You're not supposed to be at dark at all. So dude, we just seen like the freaking. Fish in the jar in the brain! Some of the fish, yeah. And that's the lab from the lab testing, the mutants and stuff. Like, all right, well, that's the mutants. From all the. <laughs> You're the one who said there's no mutants. No, there is no. Uh, all right, all right, all right, what are we... No, okay, all right, we're getting. We're... 
I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. I'm trying to empty again, but you know what I mean. Like from the radiation fish, they're testing it. We're going in, we're going in. Okay. Yeah, see, they're, they were doing something with those animals. You come over here and you see you got more. You got more stuff. I don't know what any of this stuff is though. All old animal testing stuff. Mutants up there, look at that. Which one's a fish? You, you don't even know anymore. It's all species. Like, I think that's coral or something in the ocean. Really, I don't know. Ugh. Oh my god. See, the thing is though, I wouldn't be as excited, but because I know that we're at an animal testing facility and I see all this stuff, it's just like, whoa, that is insane. And we're at night. All right, let's see what else is here really quick. Okay. I'm rushing upstairs really quick. And again, the plastic floors. This is how you know this place was still in use after the Chernobyl reactor blew because of the plastic floors. Okay. Okay. I mean, the house on the outside looks so freaking scary. You know? This is a totally different game. Dude, now it feels like we're back doing exploring in like Hong Kong or something. We're a race against time. Dude, this could have been like some of the like documents. Uh, well, the place closed in 2000, but I can't, I don't know what any of this says. All right, we're coming. Coming. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's a race against time. We have to go for sure. But hey, we got the idea of it. We've seen it. All right, that's it. We explored it. It's the fastest explorer ever, but hey, that animal stuff we see in the jars made up for it. But man, imagine if we had the opportunity to be here all at night. That would be insane. Oh, okay. Wow. What is this, dude? Seriously. Uh, urchin? Well, that's sharp teeth. But like I said, they're just testing all the fish, but they're also, before they were testing the fish, this was a fish pool farm. And then, like I said, yeah, it turned into a whole uh, animal testing lab on the animals who ate the contaminated fish and who ate anything else that was contaminated. Whew, I said it all right. Okay, cool. And we explored it all. We did it. We out. We did it. Dude, that was awesome. And again, at night. We're quiet. It's time to like stay or go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. Oh man, if we had the chance to stay, if we had the chance to stay for one night, I would explore as much as we can out here. It would be a whole different kind of vlog. But actually, you know, I haven't seen anybody post a Chernobyl video even at night right now. Like ever on YouTube, ever. I've never seen one at night being vlogged. But you got it here on Explorer Trash because we keep it real, we keep it raw and authentic. This ain't no ghost video. This ain't no take the Ouija board out and get possessed by demons video. No, this is real stuff. This is why you gotta subscribe and check out everyone else who's ever on this channel too and buy the merch. Dude, Igor, they're about to leave us. <laughs> Sessions is really half an hour just to see the faces later, but <laughs> my goodness, paperwork. Yeah, for real. We did it. What time? What time is it? It's really late. It's really late. Thank you. Uh, Wait, the latest I've ever left. Uh, really? Yeah. Well, I well I was in trouble once. Yeah. We're, we're just gonna wing out this um, ending because we have to leave and catch a plane in like 15 minutes. And there's like a almost blizzard out there. A blizzard winds, but no snow yet. But it's gonna snow soon. I don't know what's going on because everyone's speaking like broken English to me. So I don't know if there's an actual storm coming or not anymore. <laughs> and um, so yeah, like overall, what was your what was your uh, thoughts and experience in Chernobyl? Oh man, oh it's like what we were talking about because it was so it was emotional. It was it was it wasn't what I mean. I was expecting to be excited. It's yeah. like what we were talking yeah. about on the road. I mean, like I was excited to be here. It was like the ultimate urbex location it is and then when, when we came here i couldn't i could like that part of my heart that's like yeah i want to be here was like yeah but look at all this other stuff that once we're here you can see all the kids drawings you could see the like radioactive clothing of the of the yeah. firefighters and like all that started to hit me and like towards the end it just it just that's all i could feel i couldn't feel i couldn't feel just the excitement i had to feel like there's this was a town full of people you know, and it was just saturated with 
sadness and tragedy. Dude, it's, fu it's, it's funny you say that because like when I first went, that was literally my thoughts. It's like yeah. I was smiling, I was excited, and at the same time I was like, wait, but but all this has happened. You know, the, yeah. my saddest story, I think of all that that hit me the most was the firefighter story. Yeah. Out of all the stories, the firefighter stories is to me like, oh my god, like because they were the first to arrive, they didn't know nothing about what was going on. They're just trying to put out the fire, yeah. and they all died, all yeah. of them. And then we just see their firefighters' outfits downstairs in the basement because that's why I was the big reason why I had to come back. I just had to see that one room and see how contaminated were those items. And by the way, that was the first room. Yeah. That yeah. was that. It was like deep end. It was just like the like arrive. Firefighters radioactive boots. Yeah, like right into the battlefield as soon as we got there. And that yeah. was his first time too. He's like, okay, I'm all right, let's that was go. My, that was my first time here. The first thing I did when I was here is is look at that. Oh, I know. And we're oh my god. And we were in, in the tunnel and I was like I kept scraping the top of the tunnel. Oh, I, I know. kept kept seeing little bits like flying past my head, oh. going, What am I doing? Why am I here? I know. It's oh man. And you know, and um yeah, so pretty much like I mean, this is pretty much the end of the video, guys. We're just rambling on to stuff that we don't know what we're talking about. We said, hey, we need an ending, right? So we well, hang on. It. Did you want to mention about that that moment? Yeah, yeah, dude. Explore it. So, like, I think I literally captured one of the most best moments of my whole entire life right here in Chernobyl. And it, it, it's just the most weirdest thing because we're talking about it actually all day uh, yeah. yesterday after it happened. I wasn't filming it, but... I mean, we're in, like, the most... Uh, picture, like, a dark room and then there's a spark of light. And, like, yeah... Are you sure? Oh no, I'm ready. I'm coming. Almost ready. Yeah, I'm really ready. I'm just finishing up the ending. Okay, just, just, just get it. Yeah, we're okay, going. We're like flying away. Yeah, we're flying. Alright. <laughs> <So, laughs> oh man. Okay, we have yeah, to do this. Yeah, yeah. So picture a dark room, like completely dark, and there's a spark of light. And like, that's how I felt we all were. Like, out of nowhere, it's like we just accepted, like, fate. We accepted the history around it. We accepted the most darkest things. As if, like, we had nothing, but we had each other. And... It's yeah. like we made we made happiness just from each other, and we're just laying in the snow in the middle of an abandoned town that had so much tragic accidents. But like it's like we we accept it. We were happy. Yeah. Well, I mean, like we were exactly like like you said. I mean, we were just surrounded by all this tragedy and all this history. And then the way we expressed it is we just started acting like kids. We just yeah. started like rolling yeah. around in the snow. And we started just enjoying each other's company. And then and that's. It was it was it was just like the key to life. I think we like we discovered the key to <laughs> yeah, life. Yeah. And like and the thing is like you you guys might not understand, but like, if you were there at that moment, then you would felt it. You would have felt it. That it was just something that you just had to be there for. And 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 then abandoned in general. It's like a therapeutic place for for most you know. Urban you were saying stories. it was meditation. Yeah, meditation. Yeah. It was like it's like when you go to these spots. It's like not only you you know you love the adrenaline rush, but like it just relaxes you so much. And being in there is like you can just live there forever. And like if you want to be alone, that's how yeah. I felt. Well, exa that's exactly it. It's sort of the only place. Weirdly, it's the only place where you can really be alone with people. And then when you're there, I mean, that's that's actually it's only since you came to Hong Kong and coming here as well. Uh, I really realized that when you go into abandoned places, you're going there for the physical space, but then you end up, put, it puts you in a different mental space. Yeah. And then you mm -hmm. sort of, and then you, oh wait. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm quite serious. I would not be annoying that. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. It's like getting serious. Okay, <laughs> okay, all right, we're really doing it. All right, um, where were we? Right, it puts you in a mental space. It put, yeah, it just, I mean, it's like a different mental space that it puts you in. And then, um, and it's oh man, I lost it. Yeah, no, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna. I'll just like end it. All right. Guys, yeah, our tour. Our tour guys like we gotta go. We gotta we go. Gotta go I go. have to catch a plane. I gotta get back to Kiev right now, and it takes three hours to get to Kiev uh, from the Chernobyl uh, exclusion zone. So yeah, I'm gonna pack my bags. I'm almost done. If you can see, everything has to go right now. So explorers, thank you so much for watching this series. This is Prepiet from HK Urbex. He hooked us up with a lot of Cinemax and B-roll on this trip. So definitely check out his channel in the link description below and check out Solo East tours like i said they're amazing people we built like a great relationship and bond with them and who knows maybe i'll come back but probably not i think i'm done with radiation spots for a long time unless something new comes up that's crazy and i'm going to it or i don't know unless i'm actually invited into fukushima then okay maybe i'll go back probably not i'm though. gonna be back <laughs> yeah, i'll be back you yeah. should be done with this man yeah i'm, done. I'm, I'm <laughs> done i'm getting out while i still can all right explorers thank you so much for watching this series i appreciate it so much check out the merch and just get out there and explore peace i gotta go